that's it. I can noodle, 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 noodle away all day, my friends. How are you doing? I've had a few of uh, my Herba Mates and a lot of caffeine this morning, and it may be one of those broadcasts where I'm bouncing off the walls. So that's all right. That's okay. That's fun. That's what makes it good. Hey, friends, Eric Andres, your guitar stage here for today's live broadcast. I know I'm standing up today. It's different. It's strange. It's a... Uh, uh, crazy and thank you so much for hanging out with us so sorry for the technical difficulty I think we're live that's good let us know if we are if you can hear us and thumbs up and all that good stuff give us a shout out my friends today we are gonna have a blast today I'm gonna show you three simple steps to know over 100 chords without a bunch of painful memorization so are you one of those folks Make sure that you're in the right place. Are you one of those folks where you're you're playing songs and you come across a chord that you don't know how to play and you're like, can't do it. I'm going to skip this song. Or are you one of those folks where you're trying to build your chord vocabulary, trying to build your song repertoire, but you're having some difficulty because you don't know how to play these chords? If you answered yes to either of those, you're in the right place. Or if you're here to win... This beautiful Dan Electro 59 XT guitar along with the Dan Electro Billionaire pedal series, or at least four of them right here. I've got this nice little four pack. If you're here for that, or the lifetime memberships in the Unstoppable Guitar System will be giving away over $3,000, dollars, dollars worth of goodies today. Uh, we're gonna have a blast. So here's how it's gonna go. First off, before anything else, and I'm gonna get rid of this guitar for a minute here. Before we do anything else, if you're not at yourguitarsage.com slash live May, I'll say it again, yourguitarsage.com slash live May. If you're not there, you need to be there, and here's why. Several reasons. Number one, I have a PDF that I've created for you today, which is going to go over all of this, the colors, the whole bit. And you, you need to have it because this is a new system that I've come up with. It's not like you're going to be able to go on the internet and find somebody else teaching it or some other method. It don't exist, okay? Um, so number one, you got to download the PDF, yourguitarstage.com slash live may. The link for that's in the description of the video if you're hanging out on YouTube. Most of you are over at live may already right now. That's number one. Number two, we have a chat there, and I don't know how many people are in the chat right now. I think we can get 500 in there. We uh, blew up the server. We blow up the server every time, which is great. That's fun. We like to do that because that means people are learning. Uh, we blew it up last time, and that might happen again, and that's fine. We'll we'll figure it out. Okay, uh, we're professionals. So go over there, and that's where the chat's at. It's also where the deal is at today. If you're here just for the deal. I'll tell, tell you really quick, and then we're going to get on with the program here. Uh, we're doing $100 off the complete guitar system today. If you want to know more about that, just to the right of my video at the web link that I gave you earlier, the, the live May, slash live May, you're going to see a little uh, yellow button, I believe. Uh, none, nonetheless, you'll see it on that page. Uh, click on that, and y you'll learn more about that. I'll give you more details about that later on, because I really want to get along with the lesson here. And um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so here's how here's how it's going to go down. I'm going to teach you this first half hour at the top at the at the half hour mark. I'm going to be announcing three Twitter winners. Now listen to me, because last time some folks were confused. At yourguitarsage.com/live/may you're going to see a little thing that you can cut and paste just to the right of the video. You cut, you paste that into your Twitter, you let folks know about the event that's happening today, and boom, you're eligible to win my ebook series. We're going to award six folks today, three at the half hour mark, three at the end of the hour. The other bits and pieces that we're giving away is we're giving away five lifetime memberships to the Unstoppable Guitar System. This is my mammoth course. If you don't know about it already, I might tell you about it later, but nonetheless, you got to know about it because it's like near, nearly 600 videos uh, in size, nearly 600 jam tracks like that, except that was Weezer. Um, a bunch of amazing stuff. So you got to check that out, okay? Um, the Dan Electro guitar. I'm giving my Dan Electro 59 XT guitar away along with the Billionaire series. And that lucky winner is also going to win a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System. So that prize there alone is a thousand bucks or over a thousand bucks. Okay. Um, okay. Without further ado, 
we are on par. I'm a minute early. I, I really like to stick to the program because your time is really important to me and I don't like BS. Uh, I want to get straight to it. Okay, so without further ado, now I'm going to go to the PDF that you should be looking at as well. You should be pulling that up in another tab, another window, okay? So I'm looking at this right now and we're going to go over to it. If you're like, what PDF are you talking about? Then you ain't listening. YourGuitarSage.com slash live may. Okay, that's where you want to go. That's where you're going to download the PDF. If you're sitting on YouTube still, you're not listening. You're doing this. You ain't listening. So um, do that. Go get the PDF and assuming that you're looking at it now, here we go. So basically what I want to do is I, we're not, I'm not going to read this. I'm going to show you uh, a method that I've come up with. And I say a method that I've come up with because I've never seen this before. And literally I was laying in bed and this came to me and I said, Dear Lord, this is amazing this is what I need to do to show people how to understand chords in a way that, that, that they never have before. Um, so in this PDF, you're going to see that there's a black and white chord and then there's a colored chord. So you're going to see that is that if you have a, uh, a, a color computer and you're not using an old computer. Um, nonetheless, you're going to see a black and white chord and then you see a colored chord and there's a real specific reason why those notes are those colors and it's absolutely going to be the key cha -ching, that unlocks understanding chords from here today on out for the rest of your life i promise you and i do not know why this has never been done before but i'm going to show you today okay and in fact in the unstoppable guitar system i've created this massive series for this um, that's still being rendered right now. Uh, so let's talk about this. So the first thing um, that we're going to do is this. Um, I thought that I would do this later, but here I'm going to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this part first. Okay, so we have to think about the chords slightly differently. We're going to learn 120 chords, and if we have bonus time today, I may show you 144 new chords. And when you walk away today, you will know these. They will be in your brain. They will be in your fingers. Now, you may not be able to physically play them yet, and if we have time today, I'm going to go over more bonus with you, and I'm actually going to show you some tricks how to actually play this. Because some folks get scared about bar chords. You don't need to get scared about bar chords. I've got lots of free videos for you to show you how to do this on YouTube. Just type in your guitar stage bar chords and I'll show you exactly how to do it or the effing F chord on YouTube. And we're going to be talking about some of those techniques today. So if we have time, bonus time today, I'll be showing you how to do that. Okay. But before we get to the colors and before we get to that whole bit, Understand that this whole thing today is to understand visually how the chords should work on the fretboard. Whether you can play them or not today doesn't matter. Most of you aren't going to be able to play the bar chords today, and that's totally okay. But first, we need to understand how they will lay on the fretboard. I give a scenario or a story about the uh, juggling unicyclist on a tightrope, about this guy in the circus. He's on a tightrope on a unicycle and he's juggling, right? This guy did not say, I'm going to do that because no one's doing that. I'm just going to do that. So he jumps up on a unicycle on a tightrope and starts juggling. No one does that in the history of ever. No one just starts playing guitar ever just like that. Okay. We learn one thing and we stack another thing on top of it and another and another and another. And today's lesson is really going to be about visualization, understanding how things should look on the fretboard and what is what, okay? And what we mean by the word visualization is nothing more than, than seeing something in your imagination, in your mind's eye. We do this all day long. There's no one out there that doesn't. This isn't wacky doodle stuff. This is, you know, you get in the car and you know, you know, you say, I'm, I need to get in the car because I got to go someplace. You're using visualization because you, you're imagining that you're going to that place before you get in the car or you would never just randomly end up wherever you're going. That's what we mean by visualization. You're, you're imagining things in your mind already. Okay. So that's what we're going to be doing. Hopefully we can get to the point where uh, today where I can show you actually how to physically play this course. But bottom line, the, the first thing I want to do today is show you actually how to understand the chords because we're not going to be playing 
the full chord necessarily all over the neck anyhow. We may be playing just a teeny tiny section of it or an arpeggio or something like that, okay? So, before we get to all these colors, we're going to do that the, after the half hour mark. That's where, the, that's where the juice is coming, okay? But we have to understand this part first. There's two parts that we have to understand before we can even get to that because this stuff isn't going to make any sense to you unless we get to this part first. These 120 possibly a, gr a gross of, of chords today, 144 chords, I might be able to show you today. These 120 chords that I'm definitely going to show you today are based off of two chord forms, and they're two chord forms that you already know. Chances are, if you've been in any of my free courses, the, the free 30 course, uh, any of those, any of my stuff online, if you're learning songs from me online, you know that I have what I call the nine essential chords. And with these nine chords, you can literally play millions of tunes, okay? Two of those chords in that are E major and A major. So chances are you know these already, and that's the, the form, the model that we're going to be using to come up with all these different chords. I promise you, I know, by the end of this, you're going to be, he, he did it, my God. You don't believe me right now, but I promise you it's going to happen. So watch this. So we've got this E formation here, okay? But we have to understand something about it, okay? Normally, when we're looking at the major chord, we're looking at it like this, okay? It looks like just a straight up E major chord. This is open, second fret, second fret, first fret, open, open, okay? That's a regular E major chord. And the A chord that we're gonna be working with looks like this. You can find this in the PDF, by the way, so you don't have to like memorize all this stuff right now, okay? Now, with that being said, what we need to do is we need to be able to play this chord in such a way that we can move it up and down the fretboard. Many of you know this, many of you don't, that anything that you do in the lower position, in the open position, be that a chord, a scale, a riff, I don't care what it is, a pattern, you can move that up the neck. And every single time you move that up the neck linearly, so everything's relative, everything moves up together, if you do that, you're going to be changing keys every single time, but you'll be playing the same riff, but in a different key. Okay, uh, I might be able to show you an example of this. So, for instance, if we took this E major chord. Okay. Regular straight up E major chord. If we were to, this is what, how I want you to be thinking about this chord. Instead of playing it with fingers one, two, and three, what I want you to do is I want you to think about it like playing it with fingers two, three, and four. And this is when we actually go to do this. Really, for the most part in this lesson, we're not going to be playing the chords, but I want you to understand that what we're trying to do is free up this first finger because what that allows you to do is take a simple open chord, E major, and it allows you to move it up the neck. Now, even though I said it four times, I know there's people out there saying, I can't play a bar chord, Eric. Remember I just said, I don't care. We, are not, we don't need to play it today. We need to just understand it. We just need to understand the way to do this, okay? And we're gonna be doing the same thing for the A major chord. So instead of using your first finger, I'm sorry, instead of using your, yeah, some people play it like one, two, three, you're gonna use two, three, four. You're gonna free up that first finger because we wanna be able to use that as a bar chord. So assuming you know those, those two basic chords, if you don't, they're in the PDF. That's what we're gonna be using, okay? Now, um, the other little trick that we need to know is this is we need to understand the notes that go up and down the fretboard. I purposely did not, well actually I didn't purposely do that, but, but nonetheless, uh, it will help you because I'm giving you yet another free course today um, at yourguitarstage.com slash 30. And if you don't understand this next part that I'm gonna tell you, you can reinforce that with that course because I have a specific video in there that covers this in a lot of detail. But we're gonna be talking about it here right now. Okay, so here's the deal. We said that we're going to be moving that chord up and down the fretboard, right? Yep, that's what I said. And this note right here is going to determine what the letter name of that chord is, okay? So if we take that E major form and we move it up the neck to 12 different keys, 
every single time, wherever our first finger at is, whatever the name of this note is, is the letter name of the chord. Okay? So for instance, if the open version was E, this is F, and this is F sharp. I know I can hear a lot of you moaning out there saying, well, I don't know the sharps and flats, and I don't know how to do that. I know. That's, that's what we're doing right now. Here we go. Ready? So super easy way to understand this. If you know the notes on the, the low E string and the A string, you can do this because literally any place that first finger's at, that is the name of your chord. So like C major, C minor, C minor 7, C suspended, C dominant, it doesn't matter. It's, the C is always in the same place. All the other notes are going to be moving. And that's what we're going to be doing at the second part of the hour. Okay. So track with me here for a minute. The only thing we need to know is what this note is. Okay. And it's super, super easy. This string right here is an E. Okay. And in fact, these strings go like this. E, A, D, G, B, E. Okay. You can remember it. Eddie ate dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie. A lot of people know this already because they're, they're in the free course. If you don't know it already, watch the free course and you'll understand that. Eddie ate dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie. Don't eat dynamite. Okay. Now, because of this, this is the two things that we need to know is we need to know what the open strings are. That means when you play the string open, you know, don't have your hands on it. You just pluck it and it rings out. If it's in tune, it should be an E, A, D, G, B, E. Those, those are the, the tunings of it, right? We know that. Now, the other, the other little part that we need to know is the musical alphabet. How does it look? Well, number one, musical alphabet goes from A. My writing is atrocious. Um, a to G, okay? There's no H note or an I chord, okay? A to G, stops at G, starts over again. Okay, A through G. And every note has a sharp except for B and E. What does that mean, Eric? Well, I, I told you my handwriting's terrible. B and E don't have, they don't have a sharp. And so what we, and you can remember, let it be, let it be, let it be, oh, let it be. Whisper, okay, <clears throat> so you know what I'm saying? B, let it be. That's it. That's the only thing we need to remember is that B and E don't have a sharp. So, a sharp is when we take a note and we bring it up a half step. Okay. And in between several of the notes, except for B and E, you have a sharp. I'll show you what I mean by that. Watch this. We're going to take, let's see, can you still, still see me? You can see my head. Hi. Okay, so here we go. So here's A, right? Does A have a sharp? It sure does, because B and E don't have a sharp, right? So we have A, we have A sharp. The next note, A, B. Does B have a sharp? Uh-uh, so C. Does C have a sharp? Yep. A, B, C, D. Let's put it down here. Does D have a sharp? Yep. A, B, C, D, E, does E have a sharp? Nope. So we go straight to letter F, A, B, C, D, E, F, and it's okay to sing the song in your head if you need to. Does F have a sharp? Yep, it does. And then A, B, C, D, E, F, G, does G have a sharp? Yep, it sure does, okay? So those are the notes, okay? You don't have to memorize this. It's just a method. It's just understanding this. And if you want more detail about that, that's in the free course, okay? So, uh, which, by the way, the link for that's in the description of the video. Um, and it should also be at yourguitarsage.com slash may, or yourguitarsage.com slash live may. If you're watching on YouTube, click on that link because you're missing out on a ton of stuff, including the chat, the PDF, the deal today, the whole nine yards, okay? So that's where you can find that free course. Make sure you watch that if you have it, especially if you're anywhere from like zero to 10 in playing guitar, okay? All right, so here we go. Um, okay, so we need to know that, right? Um, Chris, let's pan out again. Please, sir. Thank you. Um, all right, so here's the deal. We've covered what we need to so far, don't we, right? Haven't we? Yeah, we have. Okay, let's do this. 
at the net, it's gonna, we're getting ready to ramp up here really quick. I just had to cover this because some of you out there are, you just picked up the guitar today and if we just jumped into these colors and what the what what they mean and all the rest, you're going to be lost. So those of you that knew this stuff already, thank you so much for being patient. I'm going to make it worth your while, I promise. Okay, and and we're on track. So I think I'm going to be able to do this bonus stuff with you today. So we're, I think you'll be walking away with 144 new chords today. And guess what? You're going to have them memorized because I'm going to I'm going to mess with your mind in such a way that you that you're going to understand this stuff. I promise. That's what all these colors are for. I know it looks Greek right now, but I promise you it's it, you're going to get this, okay? So um, that's it. So here we go. At, we're going to do some giveaways here really quickly for the Twitter winners. These are folks that are at yourguitarsage.com slash live May, where everybody should be. If you're on YouTube, you should be there. You should be on yourguitarsage.com slash live May. That's where the chat's at. That's where the PDF's at. Um, that's where the deal's at. And there's other stuff. The tweet, I'll cut and paste that. You can win stuff, okay? So uh, we're going to do three Twitter winners, and then we're going to jump right back into it, and we're getting ready to, to, to get into high-octane stuff here, okay? Um, and my caffeine's just about ready to kick in, so that's good because I feel really low right now. Okay, so so um, let's do the three Twitter winners, and these are folks that have won. This is they they cut and paste that little bit that's to the right of the video, and they're throwing it up to their Twitter to let other people know to share. Just like animals do when they find something to eat, they scream, and then all the other animals come running. That's you guys. You're helping everybody else learn. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So let's look at this first one, and and I apologize because I'm my eyes aren't what they used to be. But Chris Williams is the first winner. These are folks that have that have posted this to Twitter, and they are winning my ebook bundle that you could find at yourguitarsage.com. At yourguitarsage.com, um, Melissa Molder, I believe it is. Mel Melissa Molder, and. Matthew FP, I think it is. Okay, you can read that better than I can. I apologize. I've got, I've got, and I got my glasses on right now, which are not as good as my contact lenses. So, so there you go. So we did three winners now, right? We're gonna do three winners at the end of the hour. Then we're going to give away those lifetime memberships to the Unstoppable Guitar System. We're gonna give away the Dan Electro guitar. We're gonna give away the Billionaire pedals four of them, which by the way, I've got reviews for all these coming out. Some of them are out there on the web already. Some of them are not. Some of them are, are they're all done. They're just, uh, haven't been, they just haven't been cut loose yet. Okay. Now, really quickly, before we start, we start into this, I promised you that I would tell you a little bit about today's deal. Um, so if you don't know already, I teach guitar. Uh, I do have about well, over a thousand lessons on YouTube. And so I teach a lot of free stuff, right? I also have a free course for you. If you never ever want to, if you never want to pay for lessons, I can help you out with that, okay? YourGuitarSage.com slash 30. Um, the thousands, some odd lessons that I have on YouTube, I have tons of stuff for you. But there's a lot of people out there who don't like jumping around on YouTube. They don't like ads. They don't like coming across videos that, that don't help them, this, that, and the other thing, okay? Because of that, and because they want a step-by-step -step method that they can't mess up with, I've created courses, right? Um, and I have two styles of these courses. I have one on my website, but then I also have one at Udemy.com. If you don't know what Udemy is, basically it's like YouTube on steroids. You pay for the classes, but they're step-by-step. -step, they're awesome. There's PDFs. It's the whole nine yards. So it's way different than... Than, than YouTube, okay? So, um, and this, and what we do with these live broadcasts is typically we'll go back and forth. We'll make an offer for the Unstoppable Guitar System, then we might do one for the Complete Guitar System, then the next time we might not do one at all. So, uh, we like to change it up so that you guys have some choices. Uh, the Unstoppable Guitar System is a massive course, okay? It's more expensive. It's $400, okay? It's, it's not playing around. I have a course on Udemy. It's the number one guitar lessons course it's been for a long time now. We have over 65,000 people in this course. It's like in 100 countries. It's been translated to Spanish, Portuguese, Turkish. Uh, obviously, it's in English. And nonetheless, we're making that available today. Normally, it's 150 bucks or 140 
four ninety nine, hundred and forty five bucks ish. Okay, I think I'm right at that, hundred forty four ninety nine. Today, with a coupon that you can find at yourguitarsage.com slash live may, that's another reason why you want to be there. You'll see somewhere on the right of the page, you can click on this and find out about it. But basically, it's a $100 coupon. It's like going in your pocket and me pulling out 100 bucks, uh, bam, and saying, here you go, here's 100 bucks, now go have some fun and learn the guitar. Um, in this series that we're talking about, it's the number one series that's, that's on Udemy, um, there's over 300 lectures over 300 lectures. Um, at the price that we're doing it, I think there's over 34 hours of this, okay? It comes down to a dollar, to, with today's discount, it comes out to a dollar 32 per hour, okay? Now I have folks all the time via Skype or they come through Nashville and they get in touch with me and they wanna meet with me because I love doing stuff online and look, I'm reaching like hundreds of people right now and I love to do that. That's very exciting to me. And I love teaching one-on-one -on -one too. I've done, I've done it for decades and I've taught thousands of people doing that, but uh, I love to teach online more so because I can reach more people. With that being said, if you were to visit me, I would teach you the same exact lessons that are in that course. Same dude, using the same guitars, same studio, except $100 an hour. Okay, that's literally my price for sitting in front of me, even my Skype lessons for doing it online. Why so expensive, Eric? That's not fair. Well, it's because I'm trying to do stuff online, and I don't know about you, but there's only so many hours in the day. So, I've got to create courses like this, and they're way cheaper than meeting with me one-on-one. -on -one. So, if you like the way that I teach in these live sessions, or if you've met with me one-on-one, -on -one, it's the same exact lessons. Okay, I'm not going to keep talking about that. We need to move on. The discount's in there. If you want to take advantage of it, go to yourguitarsage.com slash live may. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm really excited about this part now, friends, because this is where the rubber meets the road. It's about to get crazy in here. Okay, are you ready to do this? I'm going to erase some of this stuff because you've got it in the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash live, and it's going to mess with your mind if it's all up here. So let's get simple, okay? Many of you have seen a rainbow, right? I have. And if you remember from when we were a kid, right, or any time, that the color scheme for a rainbow, you remember Roy G. Biv? Remember that? Roy G. Biv? I'm going to write that down. Roy G. Biv. I'm going to name a dog that. Roy G. Biv. Okay. Meaning red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Get ready to have your mind blown. Get ready, watch this. Okay, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Okay, I know. Some might call it pink, but it's violet-ish. Okay, now here's the deal. This blew my mind. Literally, I was laying in bed and I was like, there's seven notes in the scale and there are seven colors in the rainbow, same seven basic colors. I wonder if I can use that to teach people music theory. If you guys know, if you've ever watched any of my lessons, you know that I love to hack. Thank goodness I'm not good with computers because I love to hack things. I love to hack things in life, figure, figure ways to, um, uh, to do things better, okay? And um, one way that I came up with is, is this method here with the, uh, with the colors. And here's the deal. You've seen the major, or you've heard the major scale before, right? Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, and then we've got an eighth note there. So I won't even put it there. But nonetheless, the one and the one are the same, uh, also known as the octave, right? Well, here's the deal. Our, we could also name this by the numbers, right? So much easier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So really, the one and the one are the same, so we have seven separate notes. And what we're talking about is we're talking about seven notes out of the major scale, also known as the diatonic scale or diatonic harmony. You don't have to know about that other than it's just what 99% of all music consists of. Uh, blues, rock, pop, jazz, classical, you name it. It's based off of the major scale, even minor sounding music or other uh, modal music. It's all based off of the major scale. I get into that inside my courses. I'm not doing it today because that's really thick stuff. We can only cover so much. But nonetheless, everything's covered by the major scale, okay? 
And I said, well, what happens if we assign one of these colors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to these notes in the scale? Then this way, visually, as we're looking at it, it's going to make a lot more sense. And when we, when we know we need to, to move a note eventually over, over time, looking at this, you're going to start knowing what note is what. Instead of this being a black and white, and this is where you put your fingers, and here you go, like we've been doing it for hundreds of years, why don't we uber the crap out of that thing, right? Let's let's do let's Venmo that thing. Let's make it let's make it something new that we can use that's going to blow our minds, right? So, there's that that E major form that we were talking about. And let's check this out. So, the one it's this is super easy to remember. If you can remember Roy G Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, which anybody can do. If you know orange, you you can, you know, you know that red's behind it and yellow's in front of it, right? Easy enough. Uh, you can do this. So, and after a while of looking at this, it's really going to make a lot more sense. Okay. Now, um, I got I to gotta move on here because we're falling behind. So, here's the deal. What this does is, and if you're looking at your PDF, which you should be, you're going to start noticing the, co the different colors on here. Okay. And you're going to see that really we're just using two chord forms. Okay. And here's the, this part's going to be the easy part. The reds are the ones, right? That's our tonic. So anywhere this red note goes and the whole chord goes with it, that's the letter name of our chord. So in this case here, it's, remember from earlier, E, F, because E doesn't have a sharp, it goes straight to F. F has a sharp, that's an F sharp. So this is an F sharp major chord because that's the major form, at least of the sixth string root it is. Okay, now here's the deal. If we understand that the major chord, major... You don't have to have this memorized, but it's a one, three, five from the major scale. It's the one, the three, and the five. And as long as those three notes are represented, we get a major chord. So these guys are the ones, okay? This little yellow guy is the three, and these blue guys are the fives. Now, why does that matter, Eric? Because, watch this. So we have our major chord form, right? If we say... Minor, I know a lot of you out there are like, he's not going to get to all 120 chords. He's, down, he's on chord one. Watch. Watch. Okay, so here, one, flat three, five. So when we sharpen a note, we raise it. When we flatten it, think about it like you're pressing a balloon down. You're flattening it. You're lowering it. Okay, so flattening it. So we need to take that three that's right here. And the three can be anywhere. I mean, just like the one can be anywhere, the five can be anywhere. It can be different places, okay? In this case here, I'm not using this three, I'm using uh, this one, which is right there, okay? There's a three here, but there's also a three there. If you don't understand that, the, the free course will teach you about octaves, okay? So there's our, there's our three. Now, if we wanted to make this chord minor, watch this. This is the power. Here we go. The ones stay the same because they don't move. Look, one is the same in major and a minor chord. The fives are the same major and minor chord. They don't move. The only thing that changes is the three flattens, gets one half step lower. So bam, that's what we get, okay? So from a major to a minor chord, that's the only thing that changes is that one little guy right there. Boom, easy, right? Now check this out. So if we do this, we're gonna, we're gonna check the major off, we're gonna check the minor off because we just found out that that's the only thing we need to do. These formulas are in the PDF, by the way, so that you can find at yourguitarstage.com slash live may. Link's, links in the video. Okay, so there's our major and here's our minor. That's the only guy that we need to move back, right? Now watch this. If we wanted to play a dominant seventh chord, also known as a seventh chord, if someone's just like play a, a C7 or play an F sharp seven chord, the only thing you need to do, because the formula for a dominant seventh chord is a one, three, five, flat seven, then the only thing we need to do is we got our we got this guy there. That guy's there already. We need to throw in a, a flat seven. And the way to throw in a flat seven, well, here's our seven, right? which is this guy right here. So that's our seven. So in order to play a flat seven, we need to put this guy right there. And in fact, what we're gonna do, if we're sticking to our color scheme here, it becomes a seven, then it's that guy right there, okay? By the way, each one of these that I show you is 12 chords. So if you haven't been counting already, 12 times three, we just did major, we did minor, we did dominant seventh, we're on 
chord 36 because this whole form is going to move up and down the fretboard. Okay. So some of you are scratching your head right now, I can see it. Here's the deal. It's because you don't have some of the basics down. That's what the free course is all about. So if some of this is confusing, you sit with us today through the, through the end of this. See if you want the guitar and all that good stuff. And then uh, well, this will be recorded and you can come back to, to all this after you watch the, 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 the free course. Okay. But nonetheless, some, many of you are, 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 are sticking with me here on this. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go to, let's go back to that minor chord again. Remember, here's major, here's minor. It's the only thing that needs to change, and it changes the whole flavor of the chord. In order to become, in order to play a minor seven chord, right there, uh, minor seven. It's a one flat three, five flat seven. Oh my God, that writing. Um, so, in order to man that 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 flat seven, it's the same flat seven as we had before. So watch this. Here's one. Seven, flat seven. Here's one, seven, flat seven. Bam! That is it. That's literally a minor seven chord right there. That's 12 more chords. That's 48 chords right there. Right? All right, trucking along. Now, the last one that I'm going to show you here is the suspended chord, okay? And the suspended chord is really easy. Basically, what you're doing is you're sharpening the three. Okay, so uh, suspended chord is when we play a one, four, five ish. Okay, I say ish because there's some rules that are different about that, but 99% of the time your sus or suspended chord is a one, four, five. Okay, and here's the deal um, easy to find that out, right? You could either look at your little legend there, or you could look in the PDF. Or you can just know Roy G. Biv, R O Y G, green, four, one, two, three, four. That's the green, right? Super easy. Oh, your mind's getting blown. Here we go. Uh, so here's the three, here's the four. That, friends, is a suspended chord. That's the only thing we need to do. Because what we did is the one stayed the same, the fives stayed the same, and the three changed to a four. So now we got the one, four, five. That's the soup. That's the soup recipe. Uh, we need a four, we need a five, we need a one. Mmm, I love suspended soup. That's it. That's how it works. All these are recipes, if you will. And if you put those, those ingredients in there, you get the soup you're looking for, the chord you're looking for. Okay? Make sense? Okay. We're moving along, singing a song. Where are we at with time? Okay. We're doing good. Okay. I might not be able to get to, to the, to the, the 24 uh, extra chords today, but that's okay. But I will, I think I will be able to show you how to actually finger these in a way that you're going to be like, dude, I can do this. That's amazing. Okay. So I said there's two chord forms, right? There's, there's E major and there's A major. So here we go. Here's the A major form. Watch this. Bam, bam. And we're going to use this guy. Okay. Again, here, uh, and this guy needs to be different too. It needs to be this, okay? So here is the deal. Watch this. A major. You know it. You love it. Um, here's our ones. Same thing, okay, as before. And there's our five. Same place as it was before. This is what makes this super easy, all right? Anybody can do this. You got to sit down with it. You got to go through it a little bit. But anything that's worth doing is doing well and taking your time and, and, and understanding it. But I'm telling you, I'm saving you decades of time if you just do this. It took me forever to learn this stuff. No one taught me this. There wasn't a book or something that, that taught it the way this does. So, um, but there will be. Okay, so here we go. So there's our, our A major, right? Our A major form. So here's the deal. What did we say? We got our ones and threes and fives. They're all in there already. You got your major soup right there. But in order to make it minor, we just have to flatten the three. And we know that that yellow guy is the three, right? So watch this. Watch how hard this is to go from one chord. Well, you just went from one chord to 12 more chords, right? Because we know we can go up and down the fretboard. But now let's add 12 more chords. Watch this. Oh, it's so hard. Ah! Right there. That's the three. That's the flat three. And that makes it minor now. What? Yes, I'm telling you. It's that flipping easy. Okay? So, um, and we did get that suspended earlier. So here's our major. Here's our minor. Okay, got our minor chord there. Now, we said that if we wanted that dominant seventh chord, we just, we just have our major chord, right? 
the recipe is 135, which we got our we got that already. But this one needs a little something extra in there. You know what I'm saying? It needs a little uh, garlic or something. Let's call that the flat five. So in order to do that, we need to go. Well, we won't use this anymore. We could. We could just move it down. That's in the, the free course. Is understanding how to use the major scale to to be a ninja. Okay. But we're gonna move. If we did, we just move that down. Then this would be our one. This would be our seven. This would be our flat seven, right? So, and by the way, I'm Italian, so I've got some Italian in me. So it's not. Uh, I can I can talk in an, in an Italian accent. Okay. Anybody out there who gets offended? Okay. Uh, and my wife's very Italian. All right. So in fact, we're going to an Italian restaurant tonight. Would love you guys to come along. Okay, so there you go. There's dominant seventh, right? So one, three, five, flat seven. Bam! Right? Yeah, sure. So now we just added 12 more chords. We're getting up to 120 here very shortly. Now, we said that a minor seven, let's go back to this. Watch this. Let's go back to our minor chord, because really, you can just go back to these, these forms that you know and love already, right? Which is the A major. There's the A minor. A lot of you know the A minor already, right? And the recipe for minor seven is a one flat three five flat seven. So we got the one. Oh shoot, this guy wasn't supposed to be there. This guy's supposed to be red, right? Whoa. All hell's breaking loose here. Hell bells. Here we go. I don't even know what that means. I shouldn't say that. So there's our minor chord, right? Um, yeah, sure it is. And we said a minor seven chord is a one flat three five we got that already we need to add the special spice all right and which is the flat seven it's a terrible italian accent so here's the one here's a seven here's a flat seven right and remember what we said is the seven needs to be this guy now why are we using these colors why don't we just move the same one back because it's going to mess with your brain like i told you in a good way okay i'm literally brainwashing you into understanding chords wouldn't that be nice instead of you having to memorize all these painfully? No. If I asked you to count one to a million, would you have to memorize it or would you just memorize one through nine and then remember the decimals, tens and hundreds and thousands and so on? It's the second one if you don't know. So, so that's what we're doing is we're learning how to do this. And in a short while, all this is going to make sense. Then when other people say, well, this is the formula, you're going to take that, you'll be able to, to, to have thousands of chords like I just taught in the Unstoppable Guitar System, okay? So there you go. There's your minor seven. And last, we're going to do, so we did, do we do the dominant seven? Yeah, we did in the minor seven. The last one is the suspended chord. Here you go. You ready? Watch this. That's okay. And this guy right here. So we said the suspended chord is a one, four, and five. We got our ones. They're there already. We got our fives. They're there already. Get ready. Mind blown. There's our there's a, we need to take the three and bump it up a half step, that's all, because the three becomes a four. Look in the scale, the four and the three are a half step away from each other. That's why this guy just came up from one. Okay. Now, you don't have to use this form. You could use any form that you want. As long as you just move the three up a half step and you had the rest of the chord as major, then you've got your, your suspended chord, right? My friends, that, and I think I'm on time, pretty close to on time. I said I'd be done at, at, at 50, at 11.50, and it's 11.51. Bam. So, check this out. Watch what we just did. We did, we took E major, and we took A major, two chords, okay? We produced five different forms. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Two times five is ten, right? Times our 12 different keys... Is 120 super amazing stuff right okay so let's talk about it um, and let me get my guitar here and what I'm gonna do is this is gonna be just like a little bonus basically because I know some of you are like that's great I can visualize it but I can't actually play it and since you guys have played so well and we are on target then I'm gonna show you a couple little tidbits to where you can actually physically play these but remember remember it's really important that you hyper-focus on one particular area. That's why we've been hyper-focusing on visualization. And if you're going to be the guy on the tightrope, on the unicycle, in the circus, juggling, you can't say, I'm going to do all three at once. you got to learn how to juggle first. And it's going to take a long time. And you got to learn how to ride a unicycle. And it's going to take a while. And you got to learn how to walk on a tightrope. You know? But then eventually you kind of bring these things together. Okay?
I saw a guy, I saw a kid uh, on a bicycle, standing on a bicycle playing um, some Nirvana the other day. I thought that was amazing. But nonetheless, he didn't learn the guitar while standing up on that bike, right? He learned the guitar separately. And so in the same way, we want, the, the more you do this with your playing, which is what my courses are all about, it's all about focusing on one particular area, getting it, putting it in your pocket, going to the next thing, learning it, putting it in your pocket. Another thing, learning it, putting it in your pocket. Now all of a sudden your pockets are full with all these great bits and pieces, now you're playing guitar as opposed to just sporadically jumping around on YouTube, getting confused because one guy says something, another guy says something, another guy says something else, okay? All right, so uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and look at this. Now, this is not in the free course, is it? No, it's not in the free course. Just about everything else is, and there's a reason why I specifically made that course is I get so many questions uh, about this, about what's in the free course. It's the top 30 lessons I teach all my students. So these are the ones that uh, for the last 30 years I've been sitting down with students and they would ask these questions and eventually it was just like, oh man, they always asked that before this and they always asked that before that or whatever to where it was in order. So I said, well, that's how my books need to be. That's how my courses need to be. It's got to be step by step. It's got to be just dumb proof, not dumb as in people dumb, but just it has to be just where you can't mess up. And so that's what those 30 lessons are all about. Um, obviously, the other courses, uh, the complete guitar system is, is totally built with that. It has that built in it, plus another 200, over 100, 270 lectures to really skyrocket you into the beyond, okay? So here we go. So one of the lessons that I teach on YouTube and in the, the course that we're doing 100 bucks off of today is this idea of playing bar chords. Uh, a lot more detail, obviously, in the course than on YouTube. I like to give stuff away, but uh, I also have courses for those that really want to go a lot further, okay? So, and, and basically, teaching how to, how to play bar chords uh, is the same way, hyper-focus, breaking things down. Slow it down, break it down. That's my motto. If you can do that, you can do absolutely anything, not just on guitar, but anything, okay? Here's the deal. You go to play an F chord, an F bar chord, right? <laughs> And you're like, boy, that's that's hard to do. It's it is if you don't understand the steps. So what I like to do is this. How are we on time? Okay, we're doing good. We got four minutes. Here we go. I think I can do this in four minutes. So what you want to do is you don't want to just grab the chord right away. There's nothing wrong with a, for the purposes of memorization here. Put lining your fingers up and looking at them and what have you. But don't do any strumming because when you start doing the strumming, you start getting very distracted because you're hearing mutes and buzzes and all that stuff and you're getting annoyed and you're putting the guitar down. We don't want to do that. Do them separately, okay? But you can set your hand up and do this, okay, to just get the idea of what it should look like, what your hand should look like. But actually, playing the chord, you've got to do some things a little bit differently. So let's talk about it. If you can understand how to play the F chord, and if you want more detail about this, I've got a, a video on YouTube called the Fing F chord. Okay, I think it's maybe, just type in your guitar sage, E-F-F-I-N-G. I think that's how I spelled it, E-F-F-I-N-G. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to play this two notes at a time, three notes at a time, four notes at a time, five notes at a time. Obviously, this is taking maybe a week or two or three, however long it takes. It may take a day for you. It may take an hour. It just depends on who you are. It depends on your guitar. It depends on how much you've played and how hyper-focused you are and how dedicated you are. So there's no one size fits all. It's different for everyone. But here's what we want to do is you take this one form. I'll show it to you again. This is in the PDF, by the way, for those folks that are on, um, that are on YouTube and you're still on YouTube and you're typing away your questions and you're like, why didn't you get into my questions? Then you ain't listening because I've said it like 700 times. You better be over at yourguitarsage.com slash live May because that's where the free stuff's at. That's where the coupon's at. That's where the PDF is at. That's where the chat's at. And that's, I'm not answering any questions other than those chats there because I can't be looking at 10 different screens. I'm looking at like four different ones right now. Okay. So um, here's what we need to do. That's the form you need to know. That's the form that we're going to be working with. We're going to be working with the F chord. Okay. And if you do this, you're going to get this. So the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to practice these two notes. That's all you're going to do. 
And you say, oh, Eric, I can do that. That's easy. I know you can do that. What we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what you can do. Believe it or not, there's more than one person watching this right now, and everybody's different. So some people can play two notes. Some people can play three, some four, some five, some six. Some are way better guitar players than I am. Um, so with that being said, we've got to know where we're at. And this is the way to know where you're at. And then once you know where you're at, you want to practice you want to push yourself, okay? It's just like lifting weights. If you can, if you can bench press 100 pounds, but you can't bench press 110, well then 105 is what you want to be pushing for, not 150, right? We want to do the same thing with chords. So if we have this F chord here, what you want to do is you just want to bar your finger. When we, when we bar, we're playing at the side of our finger, okay? So we want to be able to play just those two notes right there, like this. If you can do that, you're going to move on if you could do that, we're going to move on to the next two notes, these two right here. And that's going to be the next two. So on strings two and three, you're going to play that. And then you're going to move to the next two strings, and you're going to play strings three and four. Now you can do this. Look, I can't even do it. Right there. You can either use uh, fingers two and four, or you could use fingers two and three. Okay, but either way, it's just getting the concept down. Then for this, the strings uh, five and four, you're gonna use fingers three and four. Think about it, if you're holding your hand like that, you'll know which fingers to, to use, okay? Just hold your hand like that and use those fingers because that's what you're gonna be using the bar chord with, so you gotta get prepared for it, you gotta get better at it. And then lastly, strings six and five. Now again, why, the reason that we're doing this is we have to find out where you're at, and everybody's gonna be different today. So you need to find out where you're at. Are you doing two strings, three strings, four strings, or five strings? And then you're gonna move up from there. If you're doing five strings, obviously your next step is six. If you're on two, your next step is three. So now you would do three strings. So now uh, strings one, two, three. Then strings two, three, four. Then strings three, four, five and then strings uh, four, five, six. Okay, I'm going through this very, very fast. That for you at home, it may take you a week. It may take you several hours, okay? Whatever it is, slow down, take your time. Don't take caffeine like I just did, okay? <laughs> just go nice and slow. If you need some caffeine to keep you alert, then do that. But, but you know, slow and steady wins the race of guitar. It's not like, oh, I gotta learn this quick, 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 quick. That's gonna, that's gonna like, make it all fall apart. Don't do that. You want to be very patient, which is hard in this today's world. Is everybody's going so fast, right? But be very patient. Let that be your meditation, okay? It seriously is something that's gonna gonna help you mentally and everything else. Okay, so um, so we got one, two, three. Then you're gonna do one, two, three, four. So strings one, two, three, four. Then strings two, three, four, five. And then three, four, five, six up to our five note chord one two three four five two three uh two three four five six and then eventually you're playing the six note chord now i did that really super quickly okay but uh for those that are like dude i can't even play a note on the guitar i can't even pick yet that's okay i'm giving you the free course your guitar stage.com slash 30 but if you need help with the bar chords further than what i've shown you right now a lot of you are just going to run off and, and understand this some of you are going to need more detail and you want to watch that effing F chord video that's on YouTube. Just search your guitar stage effing F chord. See what time it is. Bam. Okay, I'm a minute late. Here we go. Let's um, let's do something here really quick. Okay, so um, let's do some giveaways. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's do some giveaways. Uh, I think we're we're we're. I think I covered everything, right? Let me make sure. Let me make sure there's nothing I missed. I've got my little cheat sheet here so I don't forget. Okay, yeah, we're good. I, I remembered everything. All right, let's do some giveaways, but do not go anywhere, friends, because I've, 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 got, I've got something to tell you here. I've got several things to tell you that, that we hadn't even mentioned here. Okay, i got to get close to the camera again. Okay, uh, Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, I can't even read it. Jimmy, you see your name on the screen. You won. Congratulations, sir. Uh, these are our three Twitter winners, folks that are on yourguitarstage.com slash live may. Cut and paste, put that into Twitter, and they, they won. Uh, we randomly picked them. Uh, Jim Patton, I believe it is. Jim, congratulations, sir. And JR. JR, congratulations. 
And those folks win my ebook bundles, which include ebook one, ebook two, and the blues ebook, which has all sorts of crazy, uh, well, all crazy, they're blues licks. They have blues licks in there, and it's uh, basically a blues primer, teaches you about turnarounds, um, chord progressions, the 12 bar blues, all sorts of bits and pieces. So check that out. Uh, and those folks are going to win that. We'll get in touch with you. By the way, all the winners today, we will get in touch with you, okay? We, you will get an email or message from us in some way or another. Okay, let's talk about the five Unstoppable Guitar System winners and then finally the UGS winner, okay? The Unstoppable Guitar System right here is going to HM Bell 51. This is usually the first part, well, it's always, it's the first part of your um, of your email address. So if that looks familiar to you and we know the rest of it, so you can't just go out and write, uh, create an email address with that under some other, you know, server name because we, we know who we're talking about here. Uh, Hannah Pant. Hanu Pant. I like that name. That's fun. Hanu Pant. Congratulations. These are all my, f this is, by the way, these are $400 courses, by the way, that we're giving away. Uh, Jay Decker, 91. This is a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System. Congratulations, guys. Uh, Steve Gillett won. Steve Gillett won. Or Gillette, I should say. Uh, Mike Dowling, 72. Congratulations, my friends. If you want to know more about the Unstoppable Guitar System, uh, you can go to unstoppableguitarsystem.com or you can check out, just go to yourguitarstage.com. You'll find it there, okay? Uh, but nonetheless, if you want a little taste of it, Go to yourguitarstage.com slash 30. That's, you're basically in the system at that point. You're just not privy to the nearly 600 videos and 600 jam tracks and the form and all the other stuff that we have, okay? Which, by the way, I probably shouldn't mention it, but I will. Uh, we're getting ready to seriously put the Unstoppable Guitar System on steroids. I mean, it's getting ready to, be, to do some amazing things. I think maybe this week we'll, we'll more detail about that. If you're already in the system, get excited because it's about to get really amazingly weird awesome okay <laughs> all right uh grand prize winner my friends this is for the dan electro 59 xt guitar these three pedals the billionaire series which is like the pride of texas the big spender spinning speaker the billion the billion dollar boost the filthy rich tremolo i've done uh, i mean right there i'm gonna throw in a t-shirt i'm gonna just grab stuff from the studio like who knows what, maybe tuners and capos and picks and, and all sorts of fun stuff. I love koozies, uh, just whatever I find in the studio, um, I'm, I'm gonna pack up along with that guitar and uh, and the pedals and everything else. This is for, oh, and this winner also wins lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System. It's like a thousand bucks, right? Awesome, okay, who is that winner, Chris? Wiener. And it's Paul 68 Davis R. Paul. Congratulations, my friend. You win the guitar, the pedals, and the lifetime memberships to the Unstoppable Guitar System. Ha! Ah, don't go anywhere, my friends. Really quickly, I got a few things to tell you. Um, so stick here. Check it out. Uh, several things going on with your guitar sage. Many things going on. We've got this guitar that we're working on. We've got this pedal that we're working on. But more than anything, if you guys, and I'll tell you more about that in a minute, if you guys are serious about playing guitar, I have tons of free stuff for you. And that free stuff is amazing. It's not just like whatever. I mean, I have folks that, and you can look at the comments in my, in my videos, I've got folks that have been learning from me since 2006, 2007. Well, how long is that? That's like 11 years. I have folks that literally, that's how they learn to play guitar. And it, number one, it honors me. I'm not saying that to brag, I'm saying that because it honors me and it makes me feel really good that I am actually doing something that's helping people. Uh, and I love that. And also for me, music uh, kept me out of trouble growing up. It, it kept me, it was like a meditation for me and that's what this is all about. So I have lots of free stuff for you. Obviously this stuff, I've got the free course for you. I've got the thousand, some, thousand plus videos that are on YouTube, not just on your guitar stage, but on YGS Guitar Lessons. But there are folks out there that really wanna get serious about guitar and they're tired of jumping around from video to video. And I totally understand that. And that's why, that's why I buy courses all day, all the live long day. I'm buying courses all the time. Not necessarily on guitar, sometimes on guitar, when I see someone doing something that I'd like to do, but I don't do well. Um, I have so much, to, so much room to improve on the guitar, so I buy courses all the time. 
Uh, it's so much cheaper than meeting one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, meeting one-on-one's great, but these courses are so affordable because you're getting so many lessons, okay? The Udemy course we're talking about, udemy.com, place where you can learn to, uh, do, to do a lot of things. Uh, the complete guitar system that's on there, that's a course that I teach, is the number one guitar system course on Udemy. Over 65,000 students in this already. We're in 100 different countries. It's been, um, it's been interpreted in Spanish, Portuguese, and Turkish. And of course, it's in English. There are nearly 300 lectures in here with PDF support. So just like I'm giving you this PDF today, you're sitting in the video and there's a PDF right there. You can download it, you can view it. Uh, and then right underneath it, if you're confused about anything about that video, you just go ahead and you type away and you say, well, Eric, I don't understand that. And usually within 24 hours, you're gonna get an email response saying, here you go. All right, so you're in communication with us. We're, we're answering questions. It's as close as you can get to one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one lessons with me without paying 100 bucks an hour, okay, which is literally what I charge. I don't do any discounts for that. It's 100 bucks an hour. The discount that we're doing today, it's normally $144.99, and we sell this all day long at this price. We're literally doing a $100 coupon today. We're giving you $100, man, 100 bucks in your pocket today. So the course is actually 40, $44.99. Uh, it's 34 hour, over 34 hours of content, nearly 300 lectures with the PDF support and everything else. It comes, it comes to a buck 32. Uh, it comes down to a dollar 32 an hour. I was gonna say a lecture. It comes down to a dollar 32 an hour. How about that? It's way cheaper than each one of the lectures. So uh, you're getting like over 300 lectures for, you know, less than 50 bucks. So bam, you know what I'm saying? So friends, if you're serious about learning guitar, we're going to get to questions here. So please get your questions ready. If you're watching on YouTube, you're in the wrong place. I'm not even going to look at that chat because I can't look at all these different screens at once. It's just impossible. I only have so many screens. Um, so you've got to go over to yourguitarstage.com slash live may. Okay, the link's in the description of the video. So if you're still on YouTube, you can be there. You can chat amongst yourself, but I'm not going to see your questions at, at all. Okay, it's in the chat and we, we might have some room there. We can fit 500 people in the chat. I'll be looking at that. Get your question ready because we're going to start that right now. So last call, friends. If you're, look, if you're looking to get in the course, what I want you to do is look over to the right. Okay, at the, at the URL I just gave you, look over to the right and you're going to see, in fact, I'm going to go there right now because I need to know exactly where it's at so you guys can take advantage of it. But, um, yeah, okay, so you'll see the chat, right? And just to the right of it, you're going to see something that says full details here. Click on that. That will give you the coupon, all the rest. Um, it will also give you access. If you go there, you'll you'll figure out how to get to the free course. So if you're like, Eric, I'm in another country and the exchange rate would be like $7 billion for your course, even at the discount, then that's okay. Um, I've got free stuff for you. I've got lots of free stuff for you. So then go to the free course. Okay, let's get to some questions right now. And, um, and again, we'll only be answering these on the chat. So I think I've got to everything. If I have not, um, please let me know. Okay, so here we go. And I, I can't go all the way backwards. I'm going to start right now. How to do a reverse bend, Nation Z is seven. Uh, a reverse bend is, is basically, and I did it um, when I was playing here earlier, is basically it's when you start with a bend, but you haven't done anything yet. So you've gone, um, so you've gone, you've done this, you've gone. So basically what you're doing is you're playing a note. It's a little overdriven there. Uh, what you're doing is, you're, is you're, you're bending the note to start without ever picking. So it's bent, you pick the note, and then you, you bring it back to its normal pitch. Make sense? Okay, good, good, great question. And uh, chances are I'm gonna miss some of these because um, because it, it's moving pretty quickly. Okay, my guitar strings on my acoustic uh, is getting old. Haha. <laughs> what strings would you would you recommend? I love Vibe strings and I love D'Addario. They're great. 
And by the way, I'll be answering these fairly fairly quickly. Eric, is the sus chord ever one sharp three and five? Yes, Jerry, it's the same thing. Think about this, a three and a four, if we sharp the three, it's right there sitting right with the four. So you could call it a sharp three, but most people call it a four because it's the fourth note of the scale. So it's easier just to think of it as a four. Usually you would use sharp if you're going from, you know, like if there's a space in between, like this would be a sharp four or a flat five, or this would be a sharp one or a flat two. But since there's a four there already, you just call it a four. Cool, makes sense? Yeah, all right. Uh, did I get the right course? I was offered a coupon cord or coupon code. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. The, the, I'm telling no May. Yourguitarsage.com/slash May. Yourguitarsage.com. You know where it's at. It's over to the right of the of the chat. Uh, you hit that yellow button. That's going to get you what you're looking for. What kind of oil polish do you recommend for electrics, especially maple ones? Uh, Joe, I don't use those. I use a little bit of water. And that's it, because I just don't like putting stuff on my guitar like that. Someone's asking, should they, uh, should they practice songs or should they practice guitar schedule, like practicing chords, techniques, and scales? I say practice songs, because bottom line, no one cares if you know a thousand scales. No one cares if you can play scales fast. No one cares if you know a thousand chords. I mean, it's helpful, right? So if we're a carpenter and we're really good at what we do and our tools suck, we don't have a hammer and we don't have the right screwdriver and all these things, well then yes, then those things are going to help. So having those scales and having those chords and all that stuff is going to help. But what first matters is how are you as a carpenter? In the case of a guitar, you know, how are you at playing songs? Because I don't know about you, but I don't care how many scales or chords the guitar player that I'm going to see know or the, uh, the other musicians. I don't care what, what they can do rudimentarily. Is that a word, rudimentarily? I think so. It is now. So I, so I don't really care what they can do. If they're not playing the song that I want them to play, I don't care. So you got to play the song, right? Okay, so um, yeah, uh, Elixir strings are great. Beatbox Buddha is saying they're, they're awesome. How do you work on intonation? I think I'm pushing too hard and making my notes sharp. Yeah, intonation is a whole nother bit. That's how to adjust your guitar. And I have, I have uh, videos for that inside of the inside of the unstoppable guitar system and I believe I believe we are literally uploading those as we speak like this week we're uploading those to the complete guitar system I'm no that's not true it's I think they're in there already they're in there already um, that's intonation is basically this it's when you play a chord and and your guitar's in tune you know by a tuner but then you go to play further up the neck and it falls out of tune, okay? And the reason that is, is because there's some specific math that is to be had from the nut to the bridge. And right here, you can see that these saddles are adjustable, really easy on this Dan Electro too, by the way. Um, and there, there's an adjustment, just really fine adjustments. But if they're incorrect, and a lot of times coming from the factory, guitars are not set up totally right, then when you go to play this chord down here, it's fine. You go to play this chord up here, it's not fine. Okay, And that's because the intonation is set incorrectly. And so that can be done. It takes a little bit of time, but I do cover that in the courses. And uh, it's, it's good if you want your guitar to sound good. Okay. Uh, got it. The suspended, 145. So that is the blues, right? Uh, Della saying, no. The four, I mean, the four is in the blues. So like if we were to play, you know, A blues, we got one, uh, one, flat three, four. But if, if you're talking about the sharp four, the flat five, that's what we're talking about there. You know what I'm saying? Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, questions are moving quickly. What's the difference between the UGS system and the com and the complete guitar system? Uh, the com the unstoppable guitar system, which is obviously more money, it's like four hundred dollars. So that's number one. Uh, today, it's one tenth of the cost of the unstoppable guitar system. Uh, but what's different about it? the unstoppable guitar system has nearly six hundred videos, so almost twice as the, the videos. Uh, it also has um, nearly six hundred jam tracks, and we continue to to expand that course. It's, it's more living and breathing in that I put up an hour of new material every single month. I'm 
a few months, uh, I'm, I'm like a couple months late because I'm because I'm literally creating this new massive course regarding all this stuff. I've been in the lab, my mind, Dr. Frankenstein. I've been doing stuff, and I've got like a like a four hour course that I just got uh, completed. That's gonna get me in, gonna get four new hours of video in there, which is not necessarily gonna go up to the complete guitar system right away. So that's the difference. And we do live broadcasts with the unstoppable guitar system. So once a month, it's a much smaller broadcast where we don't have, you know, 380 people in the chat and I can definitely get to your questions. So we sit here for an hour and we may have a hundred people in there and I'm literally getting to every single question within that hour's time. We do usually do it like 7 p.m. on Monday nights um, every, you know, once a month. Sometimes we'll do a couple in a month. Uh, is the sus a nine chord? No, the nine chord is basically a dominant seventh chord, but then add the nine. And later on, that's what I'm going to be getting into this. So you'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or two, or two, two. So the two and the nine are the same. And you would just take that note, whatever that note is, in this case here, it's a G sharp. You would add a G sharp to your F sharp major or your F sharp dominant seventh chord and that's how you get the the nine. Uh, best small guitar for traveling. Uh, I like the Martin, the, or not sorry, not the Martin, but the the Taylor, the baby Taylor. It's T90. I have a video for it and in fact anybody who's looking for gear, gear recommendations, um, I do have a place that you can look. It's kit.com slash your guitar sage kit.com slash your guitar sage and there you can find all my gear recommendations like the mini guitar and those sorts of things I'm pretty sure the mini guitar is on there but that's the one I travel with I love it it's real tiny uh, if it if I think it'd say it's about that big uh, acoustic guitar if it got broken by the TSA I'd just get another one it's pretty fairly cheap you know uh, but nonetheless that's a, that's a great little uh, it's a great little one okay uh, what defines a ghost note? A ghost note is typically a note that is uh, also known as a grace note. It's like something that's just very subtly played, you know, so like, or it might be played real fast. So if I'm going like, um, that is a rake, so I'm raking across the strings, you know, then that is uh, uh, what's known as a grace note or a ghost note. You could call it that as well. Yeah. Okay. Jason just bought the complete guitar system on Udemy. Nice, Jason Wade. Great, great job. Um, and friends, you, if you're wondering where the detail is on this and you're watching on YouTube, yourguitarstage.com slash live may, you'll see over to the right, there's a yellow button. Click on that. It's literally a $100 coupon for you to have today. Uh, and honestly, I don't know how long we're doing that deal think we're doing that deal through Memorial Day, but nonetheless, um, yeah, take advantage of it, okay? I think, I think, I think, I think, nonetheless, if, you, if you're serious about it, get it today, don't, don't tarry, otherwise you're, who knows, I don't know. Uh, does anyone know to see the chat and the video at the same time? Um, yeah, you've, you've done the pop-out chat, Jeff, is what you did, so go back to the original uh, yourguitarstage.com slash live May and you should have both of them. Okay, am I in? Yes, you are because you're typing and I can see your message here. So, what's the cheapest way to get the Jimi Hendrix little wing tone? Uh, well, the, there's, I mean, you need to get a Strat and you need to get, you know, if you're really trying to do it accurately, you got to get a, a, a Marshall. No, um, you know, if you have a Strat or something with some single coil pickups, that's going to get you close to there. And there are very affordable Strats as low as about $200 that you could get. Um, I would recommend the Mexican Strats if you don't have a thousand bucks or more to, to get the American Strats because uh, they're really good. Okay. What notes are in the key of G sharp? Uh, Kenneth? Don't worry about that because, and here's the deal. Um, basically, I mean, we could go over it, but 
if you're thinking like that, it's going to make things very confusing for you. The best way to do it is to take this right here. This form is F sharp. It's got a ton of, of sharps in it as well. Now, if we moved everything up a half step, now we would be in the key of G, which is only going to have one sharp in it, the F. And then if we moved the, that whole form up again, just take everything like that and go boop right there to the key of G sharp, then you're playing all your sharps, flats, whatever, however you want to look at it. Uh, but you're not thinking about them. And the thinking about them is what gets in the way. So I don't even like to talk about that stuff. I don't even think that way. Um, I, I could figure it out here for you, but, but, like, it's gonna, but why would you do that? Like, what's the point of doing that is what I'm saying. And that's how everything is built on, on my courses is I like to take out the stuff that's been confusing people for years, tell them the stuff that's going to get them where they want to get them. Now, later on, I kind of kind of teach, I, I will teach you that stuff, but in a way, but not before teaching you the way it's easy and easy to understand. And what I mean by easy is it's not the shortcut, it's the smart way of doing things, okay? I don't know about you, but I've got limited time. I want someone to get me to the place that I want to get to as quickly as possible. I don't want to go short of that place. I want to get to the place I want to get, but I would love to take a shortcut. I'd love to get there very quickly. Or maybe not even a shortcut. I just want to get there quickly. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to drive. I don't want to take a horse and carriage. I want to take a plane to get there. Um, what things should a finger style guitarist should know besides finger picking in regards to arranging and theory? That's a really broad question, my friends. You, if you're not in the free course already and, and following that sort of thing. That's what I would highly suggest because you got to have a you got to have a foundation before you have anything else. Uh, Eric, should I take the thirty free lessons before the Udemy course? Michael's saying, Michael, it depends on how serious you are, and I say this uh, I say this tongue in cheek, but not really. Um, I really mean it. I've got to point this microphone a little closer. Sorry. Um, here's the deal: the first thirty lessons are in the Udemy course. Okay. The first 30 lessons in that order, okay? The reason I set it up that way is because they're the first 30 lessons that everybody should be doing. It doesn't matter if you're in the Unstoppable Guitar System in the Unimi course or in the Free course. The first 30 lessons are the first 30 lessons. It's just that the first 30 lessons are the, the only 30 lessons. It's also the last 30 lessons. Um, but nonetheless, uh, if, it depends. If you're serious about guitar, get in the Udemy course because otherwise... It's going to be back up to 150 bucks, or if you wanted to get in the Unstoppable Guitar System, it's 400 bucks. So you're you're saving a ton of money today. You can get into this system for, for as long as Udemy is around. They've been around for years. Uh, they're they're huge. So I have no I, I have no uh, belief that they're going away. No more than I would think that the internet's going away, or YouTube's going away, or Twitter's going away. Okay. Uh, what is so I'd say get in there if you're serious about guitar if you're not very serious about guitar You just want to kind of plunk around a little bit and learn some basics Although I say that the top th those top 30 lessons you're still learning a ton of stuff. Okay, what's a power chord? Someone's saying it's the one and the five of the major scale and that's how you play it, it looks like this There you go. Um, okay, okay, okay. Robert, can you give it another great solo before you finish? I will, probably near the end of the hour, but I mean, I'm gonna be here with you guys another hour and a half if, if you need it, okay? I'm here to answer your questions, uh, and I really want to, to, to do that for you, okay? Because I know a lot of folks have questions out there, and if you wanna watch my playing, then you can go, you can, uh, on my social media, you know, on Twitter, on on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, uh, on YouTube, uh, I'm putting stuff all the time on those places. So, so do that. Uh, near the end of the hour, I might do some more, but but uh, I really want to get to your questions right now. Okay, but I have plans for doing more during these broadcasts uh, as well going going forward. You know. Okay, what's the right approach to learn a song? I cover that in the free course. It's one of the last lessons that I teach in there. And, uh, and obviously, it's a, it's a fairly lengthy lesson, so I would suggest you, you get the free course because I go into that in detail. Chuck is saying The Cars. Yeah, The Cars. That's exactly who that is, uh, Best Friend's Girl. And a billion other songs that, that is indeed. 
Uh, I'm learning the G, C, D chord progressions. Can I use C add nine, C major seven instead of the C chord? Will it sound the same? Uh, it won't sound the same, but you can use them. Yeah, for sure. So C, G, uh, G, C, and D. Here's a G, C, and D. If I use the C add nine, it would sound like this. If I use the C major seven, it would sound like this. Um, See. Oh, sorry. It sounds jazzy, you know. Okay, good. Um, Oh, thank you, Andy, so much. I appreciate that. Take my hat off to you. Hard work. I appreciate that. Thank you, Andy. You know, I love teaching, and I love playing guitar, so uh, it, it there it's kind of work, but it's kind of really fun. I love doing it, so, uh, but, but yeah, thank you so much. I, I really, truly appreciate that. Okay, any tips to making the G form easier up the neck? Well, yeah, here's the deal. No one's gonna, you know, when we're talking about, say, like the cage system, remember that anything that you do, there we go. Anything that you do in the lower position, you can do further up the neck. That's a lick, that's a scale, that's a chord, does not matter. That's the great thing about guitar. And every single time you move it up, you're, you're playing it in a different key. Unlike the piano, you'd have to memorize all the sharps and flats. With guitar, you don't have to. So if I want to play this lick going all the way up the neck, I can. Fingering's the same every time. Same thing with chords. Right? So when you're talking about the G, got that form there if we want to bar it well we got this finger that's way back here right so we'd have to play like that and that most people can't do it's kind of a crazy fingering so why so why do it anyhow so you know use a capo if you really want to do that or play a section play a part of the chord or play a different chord form play the E the E form of the chord you know, I cover this whole cage system, what this question just was about. Like, well, how do you play it easier up the neck? You don't. You play a different chord. You play a different chord form. I would probably never play that form naturally and play this one. See how they sound the same? That's super easy to play, okay? Have you ever seen a magician show you a magic trick where you're like, Oh my God, your mind is just flipping blown, right? And then they show you how to do the magic trick and then you go, oh, that's how to do it, right? You know that, that feeling? That's basically what I do with a guitar because I'm a guitar player, but I'm also a hacker. I like to break things down. So I take things like that and instead of playing that, that form, you know, let's see, what would we do that? Like just knowing that trick right there, well that's gonna save you a ton of heartache. And pretty much, I don't, I don't create a lesson unless it wowed me, unless it changed my life as a guitar player. I'm not gonna make a video that's gonna waste your time. So every single video that I've created has purposely been curtailed and shaped and sculpted in such a way that like it's gonna get you to where you wanna go and it's gonna take out all the crap that you don't need because I hate things that waste time. I just really do not like it, you know? Any suggestions for a decent amp that's under, say, 500 bucks? Yes, I would highly suggest the Fender Blues Junior. It's one of my favorite amps. It's a tube amp. Uh, you can hit it with pedals and it sounds amazing, or you can just use it by itself and it sounds amazing. Uh, so, you know, Blues Junior, that's what I would suggest. Uh, can you please, Check Resurrections Band Blues Rock song quite enough off their live bootleg album for a future lesson. Uh, yeah, I'll check it out, uh, Brian. Uh, Eric, play any Ramones tune now or on the close at? Well, yeah, so like. Um... <laughs> 
Well, we would need some overdrive for that, right? But um, what is that? What song is that? Uh, Blitzkrieg, Blitzkrieg, right? Uh, Let's go, right? Those are power chords. And if you know how to play power chords, I have a video for this on YouTube. Search your guitar stage power chords and you'll understand this. Because power chords, if you play rock music, if you play heavy metal music, you got to know power chords because it's literally, you could just use those instead of these full chords. And in fact, when you're using a lot of overdrive, those extra notes that you might use in jazz or country or folk or something like that don't really sound good being overdriven and they naturally sound uh, the power chord naturally sounds nice when you're when it's overdriven the more overdriven it is the more the power chord sounds nicely because the two notes the the one and the five are far away from each other there's enough of a space in them where they don't clash okay which the clash is my favorite one of my favorite bands uh, they they don't they don't uh, they don't clash so you don't so you want to play power chords when you're talking about that okay yeah Mike Rooney hundred bucks hundred bucks off brother what's the difference between a G nine and a G two and a C nine versus C two it looks to me like you're playing the two chord Rick is saying okay so this what I was talking about uh, Rick is that and this is what I'm talking about friends. I hope that you got a lot of, of value from this today and you understand chords, but it's not just for today and learning these chords because when you start learning these formulas, when you learn a formula like one, three, five, you're not learning one chord, okay? You're learning, well, just now today I showed you 24 chords from that one formula. But in reality, if we used the cage system alone, we can multiply that times five. So we're talking about 121, is that right? Five times 24 is 121 chords from one chord formula, okay? That's not even mentioning inversions, which there would, I mean, it, we're, we're talking like nearly a thousand chords from one chord formula. Seriously, different, uh, breaking the chord up into playing t uh, three notes at a time instead of six or four notes instead of five, you're coming up with so many different forms of that chord, it's just not even funny. So understanding this method here will, will, will massively, massively get you to understand chords from a way like counting one to a million instead of memorizing it, you're counting one through nine and then doing the decimal system. So the question is, you know, what's the difference between a C9 and a C2? And essentially they're the same note, right? Uh, except one octave higher. If we count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. I could keep going, but I won't. I'm going to blow a vocal cord. But we could also count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And when we hear about seven chords and thirteen chords, nine chords, eleven chords, that's what we're talking about, is we're talking about these same notes, but an octave higher. Now there's some specific formulas. So typically when we're talking about a C9 chord, yeah, you want to throw the two in there. So a seven and a two are by name the same note. So if it's the C of the scale, or let's say we're talking C major, if it's the D of the scale, then the nine would be a D also, but it would be up an octave, okay? And, uh, but there's a f formula for the for the nine chord. So you'd have to know what the formula is, and we, we would build off of the, these, what we call tri these two at the top here, the triads. You'd build off of that. You'd get to seventh chords after that, and then ninth chords, 11th chords, and 12th chords. 12th chords, or not 12th chords, 13 chords. Um, and the nine chord is one, three, five, flat seven, and nine. That's typically what a nine chord is. Um, but then there's rules to, you can take certain notes out, like the one and the five. You don't necessarily need to have those in there when you're talking about those, those higher up embellished chords, you know? All right. Good, good. Man, you guys got some killer questions. Um, do you ever do meetups and performances in Nashville? No, but I'm seriously thinking about doing it. 
I've been we've been talking about doing that about doing some some meetups in Nashville. So uh, Thexton is probably in Nashville. So yay. How you doing, neighbor? Okay. So um, by the way, if you're if you're on YouTube, go to yourguitarstage.com/live/may and look over to the right. You're going to see a little yellow button. And Jason also just, um, thank you, Jason, for putting that up. Jason just put up uh, the link that you can go to um, to get more of this deal, uh, to, to get more details about this, okay? Um, what else? What else? Oh, more questions. Okay, sorry. I was a little confused here. Hopefully, I'm getting these links right. If I'm not, Jason, you need to let me know. Someone needs to let me know. Um Okay, here we go. My goal is to play like not flirt. He finger picks. Oh, I missed the question. He finger picks. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to grab that question again, just because I like not flirt as well. I want to hear what you got to say about that. Uh, can you elaborate that style? Marion is saying. Marion, uh, yes, in the free course. If you're not buying the course today, if you're not taking advantage of the hundred dollar coupon I'm giving you today. Then get in the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Look over to the right there, uh, the big yellow button, uh, and that will get you tons of exercises. I think I might have like 30-something exercises for you to understand about finger picking. So I teach you the basics in the in the course, right? In the free course even too, in all, all, the, all my courses. But in the free course, I teach you about finger picking, but then I give you a PDF that breaks things down where you can play songs in four, you can play them in six, uh, different arpeggio styles and that sort of thing. So really, um, you wanna get used to, to doing that, you know? And then when he's, you know, you're doing like a, um, You know, that's, that's kind of marked. Uh, you know, that's what he did. Now, he's using a strat a lot, but he's, he's doing finger picking, but he's using, he's not using his nails. He's just using the, um, the kind of fleshy part of his finger, you know? That sort of thing. All right, um, okay, great questions. And I love not Fleur as well. Actually, a couple a uh, couple of folks that my wife writes with, uh, two two guys, I think, have actually played for not Fleur, which is crazy. Oh, one guitar player that she uses for her demos, she's a country songwriter, by the way, and, um, and then another guy who she used to write with, um, Got his name, but he's a great guitar player. He also played in the Steel Drivers, uh, but uh, actually played guitar for Knopfler. Pretty crazy. Do you have a lesson on Western swing? I teach uh, swing, like it's more like jazz swing. What I teach inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System. Do I have lessons on? Do I have a lesson on Western swing? Not per se. I also talk about the swing beat. So I'd have to know more specifically what you're talking about, Herb. But um, but I'm very familiar with that style. Love it, you know. What is a good way to practice the different finger picking styles? Uh, the way to practice them is to practice them. Um, I have a PDF for you inside the free course that goes over all this. So if you watch, if you look at that, watch that video and get the ba first get the basics of how to finger pick because it's really important. Because a lot of people I see them, they're finger picking the wrong way. They're using either just their thumb and their first finger, they're just using their thumb, or they're using just their first finger or whatever. And if you want to properly finger pick and you want to be good at it, like Knopfler or um, Tommy Emanuel or anybody who's proficient at finger picking, um, Lindsey Buckingham, I mean, name it, right? There's a bunch of great players out there. If you really want to be good at it, you've got to learn the basics. And the basics are, are not hard at all. I mean, I can show it to you in 15 minutes. And then after that, you need exercises because number one, it's going to be boring to just learn something and not have anything to do. And then you've got the exercises, okay? Uh, so check out the free course that's yourguitarsage.com slash 30, and I'll show you a ton of stuff there, you know? 
Uh, Joseph, my wife writes country music. Yeah, she's written a ton of stuff. She's written for Reba McIntyre and Garth Brooks and uh, Carrie Underwood and uh, oh, I'll just name some songs for you. Um, gonna take that mountain. Uh, Red light by David Nail. A uh, guy walks into a bar from uh, Tyler Farr. Um, she wrote a Carrie Underwood song on the first album. She wrote two songs on the last Garth Brooks album. If you go to Disney World, the big fireworks display that they play, there's a song that plays at the beginning, at the end, and when you're leaving the park and the whole nine yards, they base it all around this one song. She wrote that song, and that's supposed to play for like the next 15 years at, at Disney, which is pretty cool. But um, you can look her up. Her name is Melissa Pierce, and the last name is P-E-I-R-C-E. P-E-I-R-C-E. -E. That's her stage name. Uh, all right, all right. Okay, good, good. Great questions. What are the uh, common and most used movable chord shape? Rihan, we went over them today. That was that is definitely them. You know. Uh, do you have any courses on slide guitar and alternate tunings? Rich is asking. Rich, I teach some slide, basic slide inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System. I don't do alternate tunings, number one, because I don't like them. I don't love them, I should say. I like them, they're okay, but I find them, number one, fairly, I find them stifling, which is why the guitar is tuned the way it's tuned. A lot of people like, and I'm not saying this is you, Rich, and if it is, that's fine too, but a lot of people like alternate tunings because they're real easy to play in, but for them being easy to play in, it's like riding a bike with training wheels. A bike with training wheels is really easy to ride for for someone, for, for a younger person who, who's not used to riding a bike. But for someone who's used to riding a bike, it's not easy. It's like disruptive and it's and it's stifling because you're like, ah, I can't turn and this is weird and these things are slowing me down. So that's how I think about alternate um, tunings. It's like, they're okay. I've used them before. Um, I've used them before. I've used them in songs on YouTube. And I think I touch bass possibly like on drop D, drop D tuning inside the course, but really I, I try to stray away from them, number one, because I don't love them, I find them stifling, and two, I'm still learning guitar the standard method, so I have a million things to learn yet with just the standard method, so tuning the guitars is, is, um, is only going to confuse me more. Uh, can I play an EAD progression? What's the most commonly used chord progressions I should learn? Uh, GC, GCD, EAD, uh, 145 is the answer. 145. If that doesn't make sense to you, watch my Nashville Number System video that's on YouTube. Just search Your Guitar Sage Nashville Number, and that will make more sense. Uh, Mary Beth, my wife's name is uh, Melissa Pierce, P-E-I-R-C-E. Regarding tuning, doesn't Knopfler tune his guitar differently for some some of his songs? I don't know that. I do not know. I don't. I do not know that. I'm sorry. What's the difference uh, between arranging songs by own and playing by ear? Well, playing by ear is just listening to something and playing it, and arranging songs is when you put the melodies or the chords in the way that you want to put them. If that makes sense. Uh, okay, uh, what's my favorite capo? I've heard some can damage the frets. I have several favorite ca capos. I love the Thalia capos, T-H-A-L-I-A. I love, if you're talking like old school, but still a great, a great uh, capo is a shub. That's like a classic uh, bluegrass um, capo, but you can use it for anything. I like it because it's adjustable and it works really nice on, acoust on acoustics and electrics. Uh, the Kaiser capo is the clamp-on type, and those are great for like songwriters where you don't have to constantly be digging into your pocket for your capo. It clamps on your on your on your headstock, and you can just undo it and put it on, and then put it back when you're done. You know. Okay, about chord forms, are the other forms of the chords you showed us needed to make transitions easier? Like sometimes it's better to search for an alternative form, which would be an easier way to play a progression. That's a great question, Micah. No, the ones that we covered today are not alternatives. They're different flavors, okay? So uh, if your mom makes an apple pie and your grandma makes an apple pie and your aunt makes a, an apple pie, those would be alternatives, right? They all taste, they're apple pies and they taste separate. But in this case, we've got apple pie, cherry pie, and blueberry pie. So a minor chord is going to sound different than a major chord, okay? And they're used differently. They have different, um, 
they have different um, roles, okay? Okay, whoa, man, this thing is going quick. Hey, Erica, not a guitar question, but are you vegan? I, I am. I call it plant-based because people seem to be so offended by the word vegan. So I'm a plant-based eater. Uh, yeah, I've been for years. Lost a lot of weight. Feel like a $10 million. It works for me. I don't know about you, but it works for me. What's the difference between the power cord recipes, 158 and just 15? Great question, Julio. Uh, it's a slightly different sound, It's but it's not that different. So here's 15. Here's 158. It's a little bit bigger. 15, 158. So you can hardly hear it, actually, right? Um, Yeah, the eight is the same as the octave, as Barry is saying here. It's just it's just an octave higher, right? Uh, really quickly, those that are on YouTube still putting your question in. Those of you still putting your questions in at YouTube, you ready? You ready for this? I'm not looking at those. I'm not even there. You got to go to yourguitarstage.com slash live. That's where I'm at. Or maybe even live. May. Well, anyhow, look in the link of the, the video and that will bring you there because we got room in the chat room. We've got 276 people in the chat room right now. We can fill it up with 500 people. So if you want your questions answered, do that, you know. Uh, how does one go about getting to write songs for big artists like your wife? Well, you move to Nashville and you start writing with teeny writers who aren't very popular. And then you kind of write with medium writers. And if you're, you're writing really good, you start writing with better writers. And it's a it's a dog eat dog world uh, for for uh, writers. It's a, it's your chances of becoming a Nashville writer. You have a better chance of being an NFL player, and that was years ago when there was a lot more writers in Nashville. Now it's gone from like a thousand writers to like a hundred writers. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of crazy. Uh, okay, so uh, what was the the thing in your last live video you were talking about, about the sixth position of the major scale, was it the difference between major and minor? Oh yeah, starting from this. Okay, so Keith is asking, um, you know, basically, basically I said that if you know the major scale, again, you know me, I love hacking stuff, making life easier. Because I don't know about you, but you can make life hard, you can make it easy. And when it comes to guitar, guitar is just naturally fairly difficult. So let's make it easy, right? Why make it hard? So. Uh, what I said was, if you know the major scale, you know the minor scale as well, and all of the jazz modes. Now, for some of you, you're like, I don't believe that, and that's okay, uh, but I promise you it's true. If you know the major scale, uh, for instance, I'll play G major, which is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. If I play the same scale, and instead of starting on the one, I'm going to start on the six. Seven, six. I'm gonna play the same set of notes, just I'm starting on a different note and ending on a different note. So I have E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E. So basically, if you wanna play the minor scale and you know the major scale, just start on the six instead of the one. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So start on the six and play up an octave. Uh, in this case here, you got one, seven, six. So start on the six and go six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's your minor. Yeah, cool, makes sense? Okay, all right, all right, wow, wow. Okay, you guys are, are flying here. Does the one four five progression also work on minor scales? <sighs> no, not in the same way, Rahan. Because remember, the one is the major is the major chord, so uh, that's the one that says, "Hey, we're in a major key." And if you're playing a one four five, it's going to be major. It's not going to be minor. So if you're saying if you played the, you know, say like the six, what would it be? It'd be a six three or six. Got to think about this. But a six four. Six two three, six two three is the, the chords that you'd be playing. It's like you can play that, you know. It's like yeah, 
Indeed. You could do that. It's just going to sound differently, you know. Oh, yay, light bulb. The light bulb went on for someone. I love that. Good. All right, all right. Um, I've written a song. Now I want to add music to it. How do I decide or know which key the song is going to be? How, does, how, how can you sing it? That's what you want to know. That's, you know, you put it in the key that you want, that you typically want to sing it in, or you put it in the key that whoever's singing it is, sings it best at. That's how you want to do it. And then you could use your capo. I cover that in detail in the free course, yourguitarstage.com slash 30. But yeah, you put it in whatever, or if it's easier in a particular key, you know. Regarding alternate tunes, it's, it seems that if you want to play along with artists such as Keith Richard, Neil Young, Jimmy Page, etc., you need to tune in their alternate tunings. Is that accurate? No, not really, Rich, because if you want to play it exactly the way they do, yes, you pretty much need to because you're going to end up running into fingerings that are very difficult. But I do it all the time. I'll, I'll take a song. In fact, I do this on YouTube. If something's in an alternate tuning, a lot of times I'll say it right in the beginning of the video. I'll say, this is normally an alternate tuning uh, song, but I'm just teaching the chords here. So here they go. And um, because I'm trying to simplify it for folks, right? Uh, there's enough people teaching alternate tunings and stuff out there. But like an A chord's an A chord's an A chord. And the, the construction of music, it is what it is. So whether you are... Um, you know, if you're writing a song with the lyrics first, you're still writing a song. If you're writing it from the music first, you're still writing a song. Uh, if you're playing a song, the construction of music, like we talked about, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Uh, if you do that, then, I mean, that's the construction of music. You know, that's like a fingerprint. So whether you're using a, a piano or a violin or a guitar or just your vocal or whatever, you're going to end up singing the scale and playing notes and chords right out of the scale. Uh, 99% of the time. You might go outside of that, but very, very rarely. So in that case, you know, alternate tuning or, or standard tuning, you're playing the same basic chords. Can you do a video like this one using the C, G, and D forms? Mary Beth, I might. Yes. In fact, inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, I'm considering doing that. Uh, the series that I just shot with these two forms was a four-hour series. So that just goes to show you, it's like, it's fairly, it, it, it can get in depth with the way that I taught it inside the system. Obviously today here, we didn't have four hours to teach and then two hours of, of, um, of lessons, right? Or two hours of, of questions, that would be a long time. And I'm getting hungry. So, um, so I didn't do that. So I, yeah, makes sense? Good, good, okay, we're gonna keep going. Uh, questions. Um, if you're on YouTube, yourguitarstage.com slash live, check out the, the link that's in the, the video. That's where you should be because that's where the PDF's at. That's where the chat's at. That's where the $100 coupon is at. I'm giving you a $100 coupon today to my course. Everything is literally, it, the, we're, I'm giving you a $100 coupon for the number one guitar lesson series that's on udemy.com. We've had over 65, we have, right now, we have over 65,000 students in there. You're getting over 34 hours, listen to me, you're getting over 34 hours of lessons in the same style if you were here with me in Nashville, which if you were visiting me here in Nashville and we were spending 34 hours together, it would literally be 3,400 bucks because I'm 100 bucks an hour. But you're getting the course today for 44.99. That comes out to $1.32 an hour. It's a little bit cheaper to do it that way. Okay, and you're gonna get PDFs in there. You're gonna when you when you ask questions in there, get questions answered typically within 24 hours. Um, just the whole nine yards. So you're getting everything that you would as if you were visiting me here in Nashville. Okay. Uh, so and I forgot why I went into that. Someone asked me, right? Somebody asked me something about the about the bit there. About the, okay. Will interval ear training work for finding chords of a song? Yeah, it will. It will help. Any ear training. And by the way, if you have any questions about ear training, if you're not in one of my courses where I teach that in more detail, where I have like actual courses on ear training, uh, then on YouTube, if you would like to get a basic idea, like a primer, which you got to start with a primer anyhow, watch those videos. Just type in your guitar sage ear if you're on YouTube. Okay. How do we select winners? We select winners randomly uh, for Twitter. 
we find folks that have tweeted what we asked them to tweet. But as far as the winners, it's folks that have signed up, that have registered. That's what we do is we, um, is we randomly pick those people from those that have registered and that's how we pick them, you know? Wouldn't it be terrible if I said by looks or by how cool your avatar is? That'd be, that would suck. Uh, how can I write songs using borrowed chords? I want to be a little more original. Lucas is saying. Well, Lucas, that goes into a lot of detail that we that we that we can't cover here. But I love I love borrowed chords. And for folks that are wondering what that is, basically it's when it's it's going outside of your standard major minor minor major major minor diminished, which is major minor minor major major minor diminished chords that naturally occur in the major scale, diatonic scale. I have, I have more details about that in other videos. Uh, Nashville Number System, just search on YouTube, search your guitar sage, Nashville Number, and you'll find out what I'm talking about. Uh, but if we go outside of those chords, they're called borrowed chords because essentially we're borrowing a chord from another key. And essentially what it does is I'm, not, I'm sitting here talking about cars and then all of a sudden I start talking about a Corvette and I talk, start talking about the V8 engine and how fast it is and man, this thing could soar and I just start going off on a tangent. That's me changing keys or changing subjects. But if I talk to you about this car and how it looks like a classic 1957 car, that's kind of like a borrowed chord because we're borrowing an idea talking about something that's not related to music. We're talking about a 57 Chevy car because the Dan Electro's got this classic die-cast look to it, like an old, um, like an old classic car. Well, then that would be borrowing it. But if I just sat here for the rest of the program here and talked about cars, you guys would be like, "What's going on?" That'd be me changing keys. And a borrowed chord essentially is borrowing a chord from another key, and it essentially twists the melody in such a way that it makes it sound really cool. Uh, but you got to get back to it, typically. You know, makes sense. Which books would you suggest to develop as a musician, not only as a guitar player? Uh, man, I get slack for this, but I, I learn so much better by video and by one-on-one -on -one than I do books. So I'm not a big fan of books. I have written books. I have books on Amazon for those that read books and love books. I mean, I read, but I'm just like, I'm not like, it's so, so slow for me that I don't love it. But uh, I would suggest uh, Guitar Mastery Simplified. That's the book that I wrote that is the basis of all my courses and the way that I teach. If you came to visit me, I would teach you basically w the ideology that's behind that book because it makes sense. And I've been doing that for, uh, I've been shaping that, but I've been doing those basic ideas and curtailing that whole specific module and that way of thinking for like over 30 years. So that's what, that's, that's where I would start. Uh, Della's saying, would you show us some walk-up transitions between chords and notes? Sure. So, like, um, the most the most classic, and you're going to see this 99% of the time, is this. Is, like, going from a G to an E minor, or we'll say the 1 to the 6, right? Um, then you just go... Or, like, if you're going like a... So, a G... A D slash F sharp. Now, this guitar is finally out of tune here, because the but nonetheless. D with an F sharp in the bass, and then an E minor. Another classic is like a, a C. E sharp minor seven. We learned it today with a B in the bass. So I'm muting that low E string. And then an A minor. So like this. Um, then back up. Make sense? All right, so um, Rodolfo, where am I posting the winners? We don't post them. We mention them in the broadcast, and then we get in touch with the winners. So if we don't get in touch with you, you didn't win. Otherwise, we we post them in the video at about the one-hour mark, my friend. How to practice when we sit down practicing. You practice. 
I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by how do you practice when you sit down practicing. You've got to be more specific, if you would, my friend, because I don't know what you mean by that. Otherwise, you practice the same way as you would standing up. You just practice. That's all you do. All right. What's a good alternate guitar of a Fender Strat, which sounds like a Strat? I don't know of one. I mean, a Strat's a Strat. But basically what you're looking for, Rahan, is you're looking for a guitar that has single coil pickups and preferably one that have one in the middle, one at the bridge, or one at the neck, and one at the bridge. So you have one at the bridge, one in the middle, one at the neck. Single coil. That's going to get you that sound as close as possible without getting a Fender Stratocaster. Uh, but you can get Fender Strats for as cheap as about 200 bucks. Any update on the Sage Signature Guitar? Yes, I meant to tell you. Ah, I forgot about that. Yes. So, the, so I have a signature, signature guitar that's coming out. And the guy that I was using before, um, we're still buddies, but I'm not using him. I'm moving on to someone because he's got a lot of stuff going on. And, and plus, I'm going with, with a guy who's bigger in town. He's already doing his own thing. And that's who I'm going with. So we've, we've shifted gears a little bit, and it's bumped us back a little bit. But nonetheless, we're still forging forward, and I'm going to have a signature series guitar that you're absolutely going to be loving. As if a Fender Stratocaster and a Gibson Les Paul had a baby, that's essentially what we're going to be having. That's essentially what the guitar is going to sound like. It's not going to look like that. It's going to look more like a Fender Strat uh, with some tweaks, but it's going to be able to do both of those sounds. Pretty, pretty darn closely. Uh, what's the most common key in which most songs are in? The most common key probably on guitar is the key of G major. Uh, the next one would probably be C major. C major and G major are the most common. How is the bass guitar different? Uh, bass guitar is different because um, it doesn't, well, two things. Several things, but the, the most important thing is it's just the bottom four strings of the guitar. So it's not using the top two strings, and they're down one octave. So, like, this is an E. This is an E up an octave. Well, if we went to this E, and then we went down, boom, that's a bass guitar. So the strings are thicker, and they're tuned down one octave. So it's E, A, B, G, and that's it. But they're tuned down one octave, you know? Jeff, yeah, we're going to make them here in Nashville, indeed. Yep. It's going to be made in Nashville. I want some place where I can go and I can kick somebody's butt at a factory if things don't look the way that I want them to. And when I say factory, I'm talking a, a small room, not a big factory. I don't want that either. I want something where I can go in there and I can literally touch the guitars and pick them up and look at them and, and do quality control because I'm not going to create poop. Uh, I don't like that. Okay. Uh, how much for the YGS signature gu signature guitar? I'm thinking we're thinking that we're going to be able to get it to you for about fifteen hundred bucks. So some people say, "Oh, why don't you do it cheaper?" Because there's plenty of cheap guitars out there. I'm not producing cheap for the same reason that I don't have the cheapest guitar lessons. In fact, my guitar lessons are some of the most expensive guitar lessons out there. Uh, but we don't produce crap. And if you want something good, you get. You, sometimes you have to pay more for it. Um, and these guitars, I, I mean, there, there's not going to be a lot of fluff in them in, in regards to price. It, it's, I mean, I'll, I'll cover my costs. And it's going to be a little bit in there, but um, I'm hoping to be able to get it for 1500 bucks. When you see these guitars for $200 and you see them for 700 and you see them for 1500 and 7000 there's reasons that is. They're not just like some random price that someone's throwing on it. They're that way because of, of well, if it's vintage, then you're paying for a vintage price. But other than that, you're paying for quality woods, quality workmanship, craftsmanship, parts, um, the way it's set up, just all sorts of bits and pieces, okay? Okay, so if I know my song is going to be in which key, how do I decide if it's going to be major scale or minor? You don't decide that. The notes and chords do. Can an electric guitar be a MIDI guitar? Micah's saying. Yes, if you put a MIDI pickup on it, and I would highly suggest if you're going to do that, get the, um, gosh, I had it. Um, but I wasn't using it much, so I got rid of it. But um, what is it? 
Fishman. Yeah, triple triple play. Thank you, Chris. It's the Fishman triple play. And um, and that's a, one of the best MIDI pickups that you can get out there. It's about 300 bucks. Um, you can fit it right in here, right in between the bridge and the pickup. And then there's a little thing that sits right here. It's connected to the, to the strap and a little device that sits right there that you can control it. But basically what it allows you to do for those folks that are wondering what a MIDI pickup is, but it'll allow you to, to play things like uh, keyboards and anything that you do on a keyboard, you can play on your guitar through this system. With that being said, I don't love them because they just don't respond like a guitar and they don't respond like a keyboard. Yes, they produce the same exact sounds, but they don't respond like you're hoping, in my opinion. Although the triple play is one of the best ones out there, I still don't love it. I don't love, I just don't love the technology. They're just not, it's just like, um, it's like taking something that's so uh, part of you, which is just playing guitar, and then making it electronic in such a way to where it takes some of the soul away. In my opinion, you may love it, but it definitely covers, a, it, you know, like if you're a, in a band where you're trying to play a, um, a part, say like a, if you're trying to play a keyboard part, then it's great. It's perfect for that, you know? Uh, American Proudly Made. Yes, it will be made in America for sure. It'll be made in Nashville by some Nashville luthiers who are absolutely amazing, okay? Uh, I can't I can't say the name yet because we don't have I haven't solidified it yet, but um, It's coming Can a really sad slow song be in a major scale? Yes, it can be It definitely can be there's a ton of great amazing kind of sad songs if you will that are in a major key in fact, most of them are. The ones that you're hearing on the radio and stuff are in a major key. And not a lot of songs on the radio that are in a minor key. Not a ton of them. So it definitely can be. Typically just slower in the lyrics and also just the way the chords are. Now, if it's just really, you know, you're talking about the chords that are being played. If it's a 1-4-5, those are three major chords, it probably isn't, isn't going to be too sad. It should have probably have a minor the more minor chords it has in it the more it's going to be bent towards that sadder sound uh so one four five minor six is definitely going to have that you know do i teach percussive guitar if you're looking for percussive guitar lessons i am not your guy i could teach you just about anything else but you know that's a specific type of playing uh, same thing with like chicken picking. Like I can fake chicken picking. I can fake percussive guitar. I have I have a couple lessons on it, but not like if you're if you're asking for that, you're probably looking at a couple guys who do that whole specific thing where they're smacking the guitar all over. No, I do not. I don't play that way, and I don't teach that way. I think it's cool, but to me personally, it's too gimmicky. It's like it's like if I, if I were to get crazy with effects, but that's just my own opinion. It doesn't. My opinion doesn't matter really. It doesn't matter. Uh, but I do not teach that, Robert, and I would not be your guy for that. Anything else about guitar, I think I'd be your guy, but not for percussive guitar. In any key, you can play a uh, two chord, example C2, on any of the 145 per, uh, positions, or are there only some positions where you can play some chord variations? Jude, I'm sorry, I don't understand the way you phrased that question. I don't know what that means. In any key, can you play this, the two chord, example C2, okay, I, okay, on any of the one, four, five major positions, or are there only some positions where you can play some chord variations? Uh, so there's, there's several questions in there, but uh, you can play the two chord, like, the, like a nine chord. You can play it pretty much on any chord. Um, those are all nine chords. So that's the that's the one, four, five, and the in the minor three. Is that right? Now, uh, nonetheless, it's four different chords. I, I I can't analyze it right now. This this quickly, I'd have to do a little bit more digging. But that's four chords that right there that have that are using the nine chord. You can do anything you want in music. That's the thing. This stuff, these are just rules that will help us 
Okay, we want to use music theory to explain what we are doing already. We're not using it to say, this, can I do this? Can I do this? In fact, if you could take that out of your core, if you could take that out of your vocabulary, can I do this in music and just do it? And if it sounds fine, then you're good. If it doesn't sound fine, then would it matter if I said yes or no, you could do it? So try to take that out of your core, try to get, take that out of your vocabulary because it's art. It's kind of like if I was painting a picture and I said, and I said to the teacher, I'm like, man, I want to use this red. Can I use that red in this picture? Well, why couldn't you? It's, if, you're, if your art teacher told you you couldn't, you might want to look for a new art teacher because really art is art and it, 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 it's an expression of your soul. So if your soul is saying that, then you use that color, you use that chord. It doesn't matter what some teacher says, you know? So I'm a big fan of not using music theory for anything other than explaining what we've done, or we can use it as guidelines to, to guide us someplace, but to use it as like rule, no. It's never gonna be it's never gonna be that. Yeah, chicken picking. What did I say? That's what I meant. Chicken picking, Joseph. If a song's in the key of C, is it fair to say that all the chords in the song are in that key? Glenn, that's a great question. And yes. 99% of the time, or maybe like 95% of the time, yes, um, that is true. Because it's kind of like there's a certain structure. It's like the solar system. That's a bad, that's a bad analogy. But like there's math that is equated to these chords, the major, minor, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. That's all built upon. If we were to use harmonies like this, uh, you know, harmony is when we when we take a note and we play another note on top of it. So the one three five, right? If we did that, that's our major chord. If we did that same thing, that one three five, we'd have a major chord. If we took a two four six, it would create a minor chord. A three five seven would create a minor chord. A four six one would create a major chord. A five seven two would create a major chord. A six one, three would create a minor chord, and a, and the seven chord. If we did a seven, uh, seven two four, we'd create a diminished chord. That's why we said major minor minor major major minor diminished. Okay, so those naturally occur, and that's why that sound is so, it's so um, in, entwined with the music that you listen to. It's like it's it's impossible to get away with it, you know. Um, okay, makes sense. What, uh, once I've written a song, what should my next step be? Go get a record deal. No, I, I mean, once you've written a song, what do you mean? What are you, what are you trying to do? Uh, sing it. Sing it for a girl. You know, see what happens. Uh, you know, once you've written a song, just sing it, play it, perform it. That's what you want to let people know, you know. It's so damn hard to learn guitar and open tuning, so how do some guys compose or arrange songs in other tunings, I wonder? Well, they practice a lot. When I, you know, no offense to anybody listening, but when I hear people say, you know, that, that, that something's hard, the way I interpret that is, it's just, it's time. It just takes time. And so when we say hard, we really mean it's going to take time. But because we can't do it right now in the moment, it seems hard. So really, it's a matter of time. Uh, if you put the time in, you will, you'll be able to do what they do. They don't have any special skill. There's no guitar player out there that has a special skill other than what they've practiced. No one gets some rite of passage where all of a sudden they can play well. Or they come out of, Otherwise, people would be coming out of the womb, and you'd hand them a guitar, and they'd be a baby, and they'd be like, you know, but that doesn't happen. It's never happened. It will never happen because you have to practice. Anybody who's good at anything, any being that's good at anything, has gotten there from hard work, dedicated, focused work. That's what it's about. That's why. That's how I build my courses, is to get you there as quickly as possible to, to limit the amount of hard work that you got to do. But you still got to do work, right? You still got to dig in for sure. He could sing it for a guy, Glenn. Indeed. He could sing it for a guy. He could sing it for a girl. And my question to you, Glenn, is why does he have to sing it to a human? Why can't he sing it to his cat? All right.
I want to see Nashville and E. Presley's mansion. I have already packed. Good. Can you fly me out? Jeff, you're not going to find Elvis's mansion here. You're going to find it in Memphis. But yes, um, he is from Memphis. But yes, indeed. Amazing stuff here in Nashville. It's really cool. Uh, what are common chord progressions in the minor scale? Uh, I mean, let's see. A minor, F, so, so like uh, the six, the four, the five, the three, either major or minor. You can so so uh, so for instance, if we were in A minor, like um, A minor, F, G, E minor, or A minor, F, G, E major, or you could do A minor, G. E minor. That's a borrowed chord, by the way, that I'm, that I'm throwing in there. All right, so what do you think about drum machines like playing alongside for creative songs, like in my bedroom? I think they're great because they keep you in time better than a metronome will. They keep you in time better because, um, because you're hearing more, you know? Uh, Jeff has a new band name, Out of the Womb Babies. That's right. And these would be all players who are amazing because they just literally came out of the womb and started playing, right? Have you used self-help books to help you mentally prepare for guitar playing? I use self-help stuff all the time, like for hours a day. I wake up at 4 a.m., I'm listening to self-help stuff or motivational types of bits and pieces or uh, taking courses, reading books. Yes, indeed. All that stuff is helpful. It's fuel. Um, and people go, oh, that stuff's bull crap. Is it? Uh, here's an experiment. If you think that's crap, then listen to, uh, find any negative speech that you can find where people are tearing you down, calling you crap, telling you you can't do it, this, that, and the other thing. And do yourself a favor and listen to it all day long because it's not going to bother you. It's not going to uh, take away from you, right? course it will. It's going to wear you down. In the same way, if that works, then when you're listening to things that are positive, things that are helping you, things that are pushing you, uh, things that are, that are telling you that you're an infinite being and that you are unlimited, which is absolutely true. The only thing that stops us is ourselves. If I'm at the gym and I'm like, oh, I can't do anymore. Can I not do anymore? Or did I not do anymore? Did I say this hurts or I'm tired? Uh, whatever. That's what, I, that's really what I mean. But we like to use excuses like, um, I can't because we'd like to blame it on something else other than our own willpower. My pinky finger has a horrible bend in it since I was a kid, wanting to slide towards the tuners uh, if I do a stretch. Do you have any exercises that can strengthen that finger for me? I do, James. In the free course, uh, which, you, which you find at yourguitarstage.com slash 30, I've got many exercises for you. Um, exercise number two specifically because... What I'm doing is I have an exercise where you're using fingers three and four. Like that. And what it does is it hyper-focuses your attention on the two fingers that need it the most, which is three and four. But there are real specific exercises that I want you to take a look at there that will help you with that, you know. Any particular book you can recommend? Um, yes, uh, Awaken the Giant Within. That's probably the number one book I would recommend. Awaken the Giant Within. If you've never read that book, uh, anybody can read it. It's a super easy read, and I mean, it'd take you like a day, um, not even a day, several several hours, a few hours, three hours maybe. Awaken the Giant Within. If you haven't read this book and you're like, I need help in life with anything, anything, doesn't matter, guitar, uh, if you want to know who you are and or if you want to find out who you are and, and find out just how huge you are and just how unstoppable you are and just what a beast you are inside, I'm not joking. Read that book, Awaken the Giant Within. I wish I had written it. It's flipping amazing. If you get to a Tony Robbins seminar, do that too because the guy will absolutely show you who you are. And he's got a way. He got guy knows psychology. He knows a ton of stuff. So check him out. He's amazing. Awaken the Giant Within. I have a hard time playing bar chords in the far end of the neck. Will lowering the action help? Don't lower your action. I tell you what to do is get a capo, my floating capo. It sits there in the air all the time for me. Uh, so check this out. If you know, if you look at your guitar and you and you press down the strings, you'll see the strings go down, right? You'll see them. 
go against the neck. Well, if you're practicing your bar chords, just get your, your capo out. This is, a, this is a trick that I teach my students uh, when, they're, when they're playing bar chords for the first time. And do this. Now, you're, you're, a lot of the pressure is being taken off of the strings, so you, your bar chords will be super easy. And that's a great way, number one, to inspire you. So it's like, it's kind of like if you're trying to, I don't know, lift weights, and you're like, you want to get the feeling of it, but you can't get it off your chest, and then you have your buddies spot you, and they help you a bit, and you're like, oh, God, that feels amazing. All right, and you can mentally go, I can do this, you know, and that's what that will do for you. Okay, so uh, use a capo. It'll help press it down. You'll get the technique down, and it won't be so frustrating that you're just like, I can't do this, you know. Man, 248 of you still going strong. You've been here for a, a while, so you guys rock. Nice. Um, that's right. Just remember, Jeff's saying, just remember everyone had, has, has had issues with these chords at first. It takes time, practice and patience, but with persistence, you will get it. That is 100% true. There is no one, Eddie Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Joe Pass, you name the best guitar player in the world. They all had issues with chords. They had issues with the simplest of chords. They had issues with this basic one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four exercise. They've all had issues with it. How would you not? That's like saying, that's like saying someone would just uh, know how to speak Spanish. Well, yeah, the guy that grew up in Spain or the guy that, that grew up learning Spanish, his parents were Spanish, but you're not gonna learn Spanish unless you learn it. And you gotta start with one word. And it's like anything, the guitar, you gotta start with one chord or one exercise or whatever. And it's, it's the same for everybody. It's not like people just get it. That would be very strange. I've never, I, I mean, look, I've, I've taught thousands of lessons. I've never in my life seen it. I've never read about it. Never, ever. So if you know somebody like that, let I'd love to know. I'll interview them and I'll put them on my YouTube channel. We'll get down to the, what it is, what, they, what their mom ate or what they did in order to be able to play guitar without ever practicing. You gotta go through it. So if you're frustrated with guitar, welcome because 100% of the people who learned to play guitar were frustrated. Okay. Mary Beth, I need a chair. Actually, I love standing up. When I do these, uh, when I do these broadcasts normally and I'm sitting in a chair, uh, at the end of those three hours, if you ask Chris, I'm always like, ugh. And I don't know why, because I work out all the time, but it's just like sitting. I hate sitting. I hate it. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Um, Shamhav, Shamhavi, I, I thank you so much. You're real success, Eric. You have amazing virtues. Thank you. I so appreciate that. That's really kind. Uh, do you think if you do a great song and it's getting airplay, then you never get another hit? Uh, you can be set? I think that's what you mean. Absolutely not. Uh, number one, songs don't make the same amount of money that they used to make. And no, it's not like that. It's just like any other job. You got to go out there. You got to keep hitting the pavement. What well, depends? If you wrote Wind Beneath beneath your wings or like my buddy uh, Dennis Mikotsky, uh wrote Maniac he wrote the you know the song Maniac that's in Flashdance uh, then yes you could literally sit back and just but he goes he keeps going that guy is a workaholic and a producer and writes amazing songs written songs for Keith Urban and uh, a million people but nonetheless he keeps going right because why you know if you can why wouldn't you why wouldn't you just keep producing amazing things right um, but like in a, with a song like that, that's just like what they, what they call a copyright. It's a song like, um, my heart will go on or anything like that. That's played all the time. That's in every movie. Then yes, on those, you'll continue to make money. Do I need to memorize the patterns and I'll know all of those chords? Della's saying, Della, you don't have to sit down and memorize them. You'll kind of memorize them yourself, but don't memorize them if you're not using them. So you memorize them because of use. So that makes sense. But yeah, otherwise, yeah, you would need to do that. You would need to memorize them if you just wanted to have 120 chords and walk away with them today. But more than that, what I want you to do is understand how, how that right there has, is 12 chords because we can move it up the neck and how the understanding that that three turns into a flat three, that this guy, poop, turns into 12 more chords. You know? That's what I want you to understand. And that that major chord, if you wanted to play a dominant seventh, you just got to flat the seven. You just go... Poop, and now all of a sudden you got twelve more chords. So it's that's that's what I want you to understand. You know, uh, Thexton, Thex, you're welcome, my friend. Thank you so much. That's super kind. 
Eric, um, if playing the different tunings, does it change the system you've taught? Like say playing the open tuning, would it change this system? It would in the theory part. Because here's the deal, when you tune a string, it changes where the chords and the scales are. So for instance, yeah, for instance, if you did a, a alternate tuning, then this stuff would have to, you'd have to change it to that alternate tuning, right? I don't know of anybody that would teach that because there'd be like two people in the course. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, it would change. It would change, change the theory. It doesn't change the technique, right? So the technique is technique. So if I'm telling you to strum a certain way, whether that's an alternate tuning or, or standard tuning, it's gonna be the same. Uh, but yes, indeed, you would, uh, it would change the theory part of it, you know? How do you manage the time for practice from all your work? How do you keep your energy levels up? Um, I, that's a great question. I limit how much time I sleep. So I used to sleep about eight to 10 hours. Now I typically sleep between four and six ish hours. And then I might take a quick little like cat nap during the day. Uh, if I'm feeling down, um, I try to eat really good food all the time because the difference in the food that you eat and the difference in the food that you eat, if it's bad food or good food, is huge in your energy levels. Uh, working out, because if you don't work out, you're gonna be tired. Uh, there's all sorts of tricks. Um, I take these guys when I need a boost, like I take some sort of like sup herbal supplement or sometimes caffeine, but really I try to keep it as pure as possible because otherwise it's like a, a short boost and then you're down again, I don't like that. Um, and also just keeping positive, having like a drive. Like like for me, I love teaching guitar. I love creating these courses. I love, I mean, Saturday, my family's upstairs. I'm gonna spend the rest of the day with them, obviously, and the rest of the, the weekend. But I love doing this so much. It's such a passion for me that like, it, it's like it's not work. So if you can find out what your passion is, what you're passionate about, and do that. Um, I've worked desk jobs. I've worked several of them over my life. Uh, I've always taught guitar, but like part-time. And, and I've worked many desk jobs and was never really happy with what I was doing there. Um, so like find out what you're passionate about and do that. And that will help a ton because when you get out of the bed in the morning, and instead of it looking at it as work, it's like your mission. It's like what you're doing, you know. Um, Jeff, you're right. I am very lucky to have my wife and my family and all this stuff. I'm, do I'm, I'm so blessed indeed. So blessed. Uh, can you show the five forms, major, minor, dom7, min7, sus, using the six string example behind you? I would, except we did that already, and, and it took a while, so we won't do that again just because we did that. But if you look earlier in the program, look at the half hour mark. That's when I started talking about it, about the half hour mark. It was right after we did the giveaways, the Twitter giveaways. So um, my friend, do that, okay? How do you get your hair to do that? Mark is saying, I... Uh, after I get out of the shower and I blow dry it and I and I use um, what's that stuff called? Oh, what they used it in the fifties, Dip, like Dipper Do, but like uh, it's got a name for it. But um, pomp, no, I don't know what it's called. It's like pompadour stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. What was the bottle you showed us? Oh, it's called herb uh, herb herba mate herba mate. It's just it's like five hour energy except it's. It's good for you, it's not like crappy. And this stuff has like a ton of B12 in it and it's got some caffeine and, um, and stuff like that. And it's amazing, it's like awesome. I will come work uh, with you anytime, my friend. Jeff, all right, well let me know, Jeff. We need people, so indeed, uh, would love that. Robert's saying, after a couple of hours of practice, I find it difficult to slide my fingers on the strings. Is this just me or common uh, use fast fret? Etc. I've never used fat fret, fast fret, um, or fat fret. I've never used those. I've heard people using those, but bottom line, uh, what's great is Robert, you're passionate about playing right now, more passionate than you were before, and that's why your fingers are hurting because you've got more time here. So it's like when you start getting passionate about going to the gym or running, and you do it, and now you're like, dang, I'm sore because you're doing more than you were doing. But once your body gets conditioned or your fingers get conditioned to, to, to catch up to where your passion is, then you're going to be fine. Pomade. Thank you so much, Dre. Thank you. Pomade. Dapper Dan. Yeah. Um, but that's the deal. So it's just that your passion is higher than your, your conditioning. And once your, once your conditioning catches up to your passion, you're going to be fine. Okay. 
uh, Deanna, you say, you're very inspirational, Eric. I may, I may not understand everything you said yet, but you keep me hanging in. Oh, love it. Love your talks and your tutorials. Thank you so much, Deanna. I appreciate that a ton. Is jazz theory and standards and all such stuff for intermediates? Yes, indeed. And I say that because there's some music theory to know. When you're talking about jazz, it's not as simple as, say, blues. And really, blues can get complicated, but jazz in and of itself, just the nature of it starting out of the gate, it's not super complex. It can be super complex, uh, but it definitely starts off more complex than the other styles and definitely ends up more complex than many of the other styles. So there's definitely some theory, but the stuff that we were working on today, like this sort of thing, that's a primer for jazz, is understanding how the scale works and how it relates to chords and that sort of thing. Because if you don't understand that, then you're, you're at end up have to memorize a ton of stuff as opposed to understanding, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, coital silver and gold works wonders. Indeed, I've never tried the coital gold, but I've tried coital silver. Uh, I drink that stuff whenever I'm not feeling so hot. How do you do a G in the cage system? Glenn is saying, great question. We said that earlier. And Glenn, you don't do it very easily. It's not, you know, like that. That's what it would look like, right? But realistically, who's going to hold that chord? A madman, right? So what I'm saying is you, you know where the positions are, but you don't necessarily play that chord. I'd play the E form is what I would do. Because listen. Whoops. They don't sell that. They don't sound that different, and this one's a lot easier to play. Um, but you know what? You might might play the smaller part of the chord, like the top four strings, and that's how I use it. It's just knowing. Yeah, I'm gonna miss this guitar, indeed, Jeff. I'm gonna miss this guitar. I've really fallen in love with it, especially that 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 P90 pickup. It just sings. Holy mackerel, it's it's amazing. Robert, see you, buddy. Thank you so much, my friend. Robert's uh, taken off. Um, oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? One of my all-time favorite movies. Yeah, it is it is amazing. Yeah, Dapper Dan. Yep, I know what you're talking about in, in that movie. That's where I got the name from. Uh, oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? Yeah, in fact, uh, the singer, the, the guy that sang that is... My ex-girlfriend used to teach... This is going back. My ex-girlfriend used to teach... The guy that sings that used to teach his daughter violin here in Nashville everybody knows everybody so like you're like oh he this is you know I mean the uh, this happened to me a few years ago some people you know this story so um, teaching online here I uh, this is a crazy story um, teaching online I a lot of people get in touch with me you know and this one guy is a chiropractor and he says Eric, I understand, because I used to have arthritis pretty bad, and I've talked about it before. My fingers are fairly deformed and stuff like that, at least on this hand. My knuckles are, you can see. And, um, and I've mentioned that, and I haven't had arthritis for a long, or a long time since I cut dairy and stuff like that out of my diet, because that's highly inflammatory. At least it was for me. Most people it is. But nonetheless, cut that stuff out of my diet. Still had this messed up, these messed up fingers. And I had mentioned it maybe in a video. And he said, hey, I'm a chiropractor. I can help with that. I'm coming through Nashville. And I have a client there. And I'd like to help you as well. So meet me at this house. And I said, cool. So I did that. And I meet him at this house. And I drive up to this house. It's a giant house with a, a, a putting, like a green in front of the yard. And I'm like, dear Lord, this guy's got money. Whoever this is, guy, guy or gal. And I walk into the house. And there's help there's people there like you know maids and stuff like that and, and i'm like um ask for the guy and he does a back adjustment on me and we chit chat and stuff like that and he's like hey um sit down for a minute i want you to meet somebody and i'm like all right cool so i'm sitting down there and i swear to you vince gill walks out no shoes t-shirt and like sweatpants Literally, Vince Gill walks up to me, giant of a man, and he goes, hey, how you doing? I'm Vince. And I'm like, yeah, I know who you are. Uh, anyhow, if you don't know who Vince Gill is, he's a monster guitar player. I think he's playing guitar now for the Eagles, but he's a he's an amazing guitar player. Played with the, uh, the Time Jumpers, and uh, he's an artist in his own right. Amazing guitar player, amazing singer, amazing picker. And, uh, and he has a amazing guitar player uh, and has owned so many amazing guitars millions of dollars worth of guitars and so he took me into a studio where he said well what kind of guy are you a strat guy les paul and i'm like i'm all i love them all and he had rows and rows of guitars in these drawers all around this 
gigantic studio. I mean, like literally just in there, I was just doing the math and I'm like, I'm like, you have to have $2 million worth of guitars in here. And he said, yeah, this is, these are the ones that, that, that survived the flood. So we had this huge flood in 20, I don't know when it was, 20, I don't know how, it was many years ago. Um, we had a huge flood in Nashville and he had just taken the majority of those guitars, moved them from uh, where they were, where, where it got flooded, but he didn't take them all. So he lost some of them and these were the ones that survived, uh, but pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff, but a lot of people know know different people here in Nashville. It's kind of crazy. Will the guitarist job survive in the future after seven years of something? Because there because there are too many guitar players. There are too many people. So if you want to be a chef, there are too many chefs. If you want to be a guitar player, there's too many guitar players. If you want to be an NFL player, there's too many. It doesn't matter what you're in. There's too many people. And when I say there's too many people, it just means there's competition in everything and we're just getting more and more competitive. Um, and guess what? It's totally fine because, uh, number one, we need people to play campfire guitars. We need people to play uh, excellent guitar, you know, mastery classes and this, that, and the other thing. So it doesn't matter. And two, what are you competing against, right? Like if you're just doing what you do and do it the best and just compete with yourself, right? Uh, but you know, as far as jobs, like I don't have any jobs for guitar players other than if you're good, someone's going to hire you. So, um, and if you're better than somebody else and you're out there hitting the streets and making yourself known, then you're going to get a gig. Uh, but if you're not making yourself known or you suck, then definitely you're not going to get a gig. Uh, but that doesn't have so much to do with there being too many people. That has to do with just that there's competition in, that, in everything that we do, right? All right, we're gonna go about 20 more minutes here, my friend, and then we're gonna and we're gonna head out because I promised you two hours of Q and A, and that would be. Am I right in that, or did I go over? Two o'clock. No, that would be right. That'd be right because we did an hour of lessons and then two hours of questions, and I want to make sure you get as many of your questions answered. All right, uh, really quickly, if you're watching on YouTube, um, and you're and you keep posting your question, I'm not answering the questions on YouTube. So there's a link that you're gonna find in the, in the description of the video. And it says something about go here, go there, because that's where I'm answering the questions. We have 223 people in the chat right now. We can get 500 in there. So if you're on YouTube and you're typing away and you're, and you're like getting mad at me because I'm not answering your question, because I am not there, okay? You're literally talking to the wall there. So you wanna go click on the link that's in the description of the video and go to that chat. Also, you can download the PDF that's going to support all this good stuff. And I've got a $100 coupon for you today. It's literally a hundred bucks to the number one guitar lesson series that's on Udemy.com. Udemy is basically like YouTube on steroids. It's paid. Um, and today it's a hundred dollars off. It's a $44.99. It's called, it's, it, the course is $44.99. It's normally $144.99, hundred bucks off. And literally if you're serious about guitar, this will change your life. Uh, we have over 65,000 students in this one course already. So, and it's the number one course. So uh, what are you waiting for, all right? So go over there. There's tons of great stuff over there, right? Uh, great, great questions, by the way, today. Yeah, watch this video about Vince Gill's guitars. Indeed, he's got a great one on YouTube and that was the room that I was in as well. That's that's his home in, um, in Belle Mead, which is a real high, um, it's, it's a real high-end part of town. It's really beautiful out there. Um, I am awake late night. Nice. Love it. Are you only going to be answering questions on this forum in the future? Example, not YouTube and Facebook. Glenn's asking. Uh, on these Saturday broadcasts, yes, Glenn, because we have, I mean, we had like five, more than, I think we had over 5,000 people sign up for this broadcast. And so if I've got, Facebook scrolling, and I really, I've got three monitors in here right now, so, uh, and, and and two of them are duplicated because I have my, my computer being a big computer over here. Um, so really, I'm looking at two monitors, and the other one is me, so I know what's going on in the studio and which, which images and zooms you're getting, so I know what to do. Uh, so with that being said, I'm really only can look at one screen at a time, so that's why we have everybody come here. And if we're looking, if I was looking at three chats, it would be mind boggling, okay? Okay, um, are you are you gonna make YouTube angry by not looking at their screen? No, definitely not. Definitely not. 
All right, 228 of you guys still in here. I absolutely love it. 228 of you still in here. Um, yeah, no, YouTube doesn't care. They're so huge, you know. They don't. They don't need me per se. Um, but I do. Here's the. Here's the other thing, Glenn. Is that on Thursdays? So I do this on Thursdays, and on those days, yes, I indeed. Uh, answer on Facebook and I answer on YouTube and then we don't have this chat here so it's different on those days just because it's just it's maddening to have as many people here and to be doing that you know uh, what are the usual or common gauge of strings for an for an acoustic guitar uh, the thicker the strings on the acoustic, typically the better, like you want the 12s, you don't want it, you 12s, 13s, those sorts of things, that's what, pr preferably what you want. The thinner strings, bad intonation, and they just don't sound so good. And you definitely do not want to put uh, electric guitar strings on an acoustic guitar because that is just not good because um, it will make, so like um, a 1969 here is using 10s. You, you can do that, that's fine, but um, it's gonna, it's gonna put your guitar, if you're gonna have intonation problems and it's not gonna sound as big and there's, there's several reasons why you would not wanna do that. Why guitars such as Kutaro Oshio are not pop, oh, I missed that one, why they're not popular. Um, the internet's a funny place, okay? And um, just because you're good doesn't mean that people are gonna know about you. For the same reason that you don't have to be good and people will know about you. Right, um, I don't know what the Kardashians are bringing to the table, but they're every single one of the Kardashians, or other other than them being pretty to look at, uh, which is why they're on there. Right, it's like that's why they're they're huge. So um, I don't know, I don't know specifically that guitar player because I don't know. <laughs> what amp did I use today, uh, buddy? I used Jeff. I used my Kemper actually, and I'm not too sure how it sounded coming across. Please let me know because in here it didn't actually sound too good. I typically listen to it with headphones, and um, and for whatever reason today, going through my, my 412 stack here, it didn't sound like I wanted it to sound, so I don't know. I just don't know. I'm not, I'm not one too happy with the sound today. But hopefully, but I've got a direct feed to you guys, so you probably got the sound that I normally get in my headphones, you know? Um, yeah, no, Glenn, I know you weren't questioning me. I was just, no, no, totally. I didn't take that offensively. Are you going to do a live video this Thursday? Mary Beth is asking. Yes, I should be doing that. Yeah, I do. I'm heading, I'm going to a Tony Robbins seminar coming up here soon, but uh, it's not during that one, so. And yeah, no, Glenn, I, I don't mind anybody asking me any question. I really don't. If I don't want to answer it, I won't. But no, I don't mind at all. Sounded okay. A little twangy, someone said. Okay, okay. I'll listen back to the video and see, you know, what this, the, you know, I'll listen back to it. It may be the guitar. Maybe that, that's the sound of the guitar. It maybe may sounded exactly like I wanted it to sound. But nonetheless, in the studio here, I just didn't, I didn't love the way it sounded. It was, it was real bass heavy, to be quite honest with you in here. Um, sounded better in, in the headphones. Oh, good. Sounded really good, and I'm on headphones on my laptop. It sounded great, pal. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate that. What are some good headphones to use? Uh, Mary Beth Chris, my right-hand man, uh, who's man in the board right now, just suggested these mic tech um, headphones, and they, were, they are really good. So I love a good set of headphones, and I've had several of them. Uh, several pair but these are really rugged and i love them i've got a good pair of fostex but what's the what's the model name of that one chris the dh90 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 yeah. so they were like maybe a hundred bucks so they're kind of uh, you know more pricey but not as nearly as expensive as like beats which are overpriced uh and these go down to 10 hertz which i don't think i've never seen headphones go down to 10 hertz ever most of them go down to 20 hertz, but that's the real low, like kick drums and stuff. It's about where they start start kicking in. It's about like seven or eight or nine, I think, um, and a little bit beyond that. But but literally, um, these are ten. These go down to ten, which are amazing, you know. 
Uh, will this video be available to rewind after the transmission finishes? It will, Lucas. It will be available for rewind and speeding up and slowing down and all the rest, you know? Sounded like a Dan Electro, true color amp. Okay, excellent. Love it, Mark. Love that you know what the Dan Electro should sound like, and I'm glad uh, that you're saying that. So great. Guitars guitars and, and stuff related to it is, is extremely expensive in India. What to do for it? Well, that's the unfortunate thing is like with these exchange rates and stuff. It's like we're all global now, but at the same time, it makes things really difficult too. So... You know, one thing you could do is you could buy used. Obviously, when you buy something that's more affordable, you're paying, you're getting something that's more affordable. Typically, it's made cheaper and that sort of thing. But I would suggest getting something that's used. So get something good that's used. Here in the States, if I buy something brand new that's a thousand bucks, I'll buy it used for 500 bucks typically. But, Na but Nashville's a little bit different because there's a lot of gear here. There's a lot of players, a lot of people giving up because there's a lot of competition. So you can find gear all the time. Um, but it's typically about half price of what you'd pay for in the store, which is awesome. Tips for getting a good, good tremolo on the sixth string. Hmm. Um, I'd say it's just like anything else. It's just practicing. It's just practicing that, Greg. Uh, so if you want to get good at doing a tremolo on, on the sixth string, uh, you know, just practice it slowly. Type of thing, you know. Practice um, slowly instead of fast because you'd rather accuracy, and accuracy always births speed, never the other way around. What's the best way to find a song? And a key of a song, especially when the song has a lot of fingerstyle. Glenn, that one takes a little, a little to answer if I want to answer it accurately. So on YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage Ear, and I will show you exactly how to do that. First chord and the last chord of the song are usually a big indicator of that, but I talk about being a detective and looking for clues, and it's really important that you understand that. Um, what I mean by clues, because... You don't want to just automatically assume that you're in the right key when you may not be, but you're looking for clues, and each clue that you get will point towards your tonal center. Brian's saying, I buy everything used. Brian, I almost buy everything used as well. The Kemper I bought new, I just did. It's electronic. It was, I just did. Um, I just did. But normally I buy everything used. I think I might have looked for a used Kemper too, and I got it for as cheap as I would a used one. Those aren't half price because those are those are you know those are not. But most other things are. Uh, yeah, here someone bought a, a Gretsch uh, 5129. It looks mint. Yeah. Do you ever suggest anchoring on the guitar when finger when, when finger picking? Um, yeah. So if you mean like putting your pinky here, you can do that. Now, if you're playing classical guitar, that's a big no-no because. But that's more. It's a big no-no because it's just tradition. It's just traditionally don't do it. Now there is some theory behind it in that the more you touch the top of the guitar, especially the top, but the whole guitar in general, the less it sings out. And back in the day when you didn't have microphones you know, hundreds of years ago when you were playing classical guitar, that's what the tradition was. You try to keep that guitar open and have it sing. And so you planting your finger there would quiet, quiet it down if you're playing an ensemble or playing uh, a show. So it was very important to do that. And that tradition's carried on. Other than that, otherwise, um, it's totally okay to do that, right? We have electric guitars now and microphones and everything else. So it's totally okay. If it works for you, then do it. I do both. It just depends on the scenario. Uh, banjo players, it's, it's, it's mandatory that you plant your finger because it gets you, it's louder because you can really pluck the strings, you know, better. All right, um, I'm gonna get back here. Could, um, okay. Thanks to Jason and all the people that make this work. Yeah, Jason and Chris, Henson, uh, John, I've got an amazing team. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's true. Man, without them, I would not be able to do what I'm doing here. So it's so nice to be able to sit here in front of you guys and just be, be concentrating on what it is that I need to teach you and to not be manning the board. If you guys remember, I used to have to sit here with my, you know, with my computer or my, my iPad and I was doing all this stuff and I had technical problems and it was not very fun to do all that. And this way I can just focus on you guys and what you guys need instead of 
all this stuff, you know. All right, so rocking along, singing a song. We got nine minutes, my friends. If you're watching on YouTube, last chance to head on over because I'm going to answer questions for nine more minutes and then I'm out of here. Uh, we did three hours today. Um, really quickly, if you're on YouTube, yourguitarstage.com slash live, you got to go there. That's where the PDF is at. It's going to support what we talked about today. It's where the chat's at and the $100 coupon. And for friends that are, that are watching this still right now, if you're on the fence about this, the only thing I can tell you is it's the number one guitar lesson on, on Udemy. 65,000 people in the course were, were literally taking a hundred bucks off today. So what's that? 66% off. Um, it relates to a dollar thirty-two an hour with me, the same guitar teacher. It's just me teaching in there, right? Same studio, same guitars, same all. If you were to visit me here in Nashville, except it's almost a, uh, you know, I mean, how much is what's the difference in there, right? A hundred dollars an hour, a dollar thirty-two an hour. It's a little bit cheaper. So, take advantage of it if you're serious about guitar. If you're not serious about guitar, then don't do it. If you just want to kind of visit me here and do these, that's totally fine. I'm, I've got tons of free stuff for you, a thousand some odd videos on YouTube. I've got the free course. At least take advantage of the free course. So if you're not buying anything today, if you're not taking advantage of the offer, then don't. But take advantage of something. Download the PDF, to, you know, get in the free course. Do something to change your playing. If you're doing the same thing all the time and you're like, I don't understand why I'm not changing, it's because you're doing the same thing all the time. And you need inspiration. You need new things. You need lessons. You need someone to guide you and to, to, to pull it out of you, okay? Look, I don't, I don't go to these Tony Robbins seminars. I don't read these books. I don't do all this stuff. If I was just able to do it without it, why would I do that? We would waste the time and money, but it doesn't. It inspires me. I get new ideas. I grow, and it's, uh, and it's very addictive. It's awesome, so you got to do it. You know what I'm saying? If you want to get better. If you don't, if you're totally happy with where you're at, we, the world needs mediocre guitar players to play campfire songs and everything else. And, there's, and you could be a great guitar player and do that. But I'm just saying, like, it's totally fine. There's no judgment. It's art. So, like, if I want to sculpt on the weekends and I sculpt for a couple hours, but I suck at it, there should be no foul in that. I should be able to do that. So I, when I say it, I say it with the most sincerity. Like, you are where you are. And you, you're going where you want to go. But if you do want to get serious about guitar, take advantage of the, 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 the price drop today. Um, if you're looking to get in the Unstoppable Guitar System, that's, that's a $400 course. And that's totally fine. It's, it has more stuff than, than, the, than the Complete System. Um, and I've been over that. I won't talk about that. But nonetheless, the Complete Guitar System, you could literally buy that. And in three years from now, you may or may not have gone through all the videos. There's there's over 300 lectures in there, so it's a lot, okay? Can I leave my acoustic guitar hanging on the wall in my air-conditioned home, or should it be kept in the case with a humid pack? Uh, Mike, if your guitar, if your house is within the range of humidity, which is like, you know, I'm being liberal here, 45 to 65%-ish, uh, if you're in that basic range for like long periods of time, like an average of that, then you're good. But if you're down to in the teens and in the 20s and you have an acoustic guitar, not so good. Your guitar can split and break and bad things can happen. Electric guitar can withstand more. So, um, or if it's really, really super humid, that's not the best either. But yeah, can I, all my guitars are hanging up on walls. Um, I just will get a humidifier in the winter. I run humidifiers just to make sure that everything is, is cool. You know, and make sure that, that it's not splitting and those sorts of things. So, yeah. Uh, Jason just put that link in, by the way, uh, in the chat feed. So if you're looking for it, uh, this is, you know, at uh, yourguitarstage.com slash live. Uh, 1969 is saying, Udemy system is great. Thank you, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, my new name is all caps Roy G. Biv. I love it. I'm seriously serious. Uh, 69 is saying, I have a Ethan Hart. Is that a good beginner guitar? I've never heard of it, but any guitar is a good beginner guitar because you're just learning the basics, right? And you want to, number one, you want to make sure that you're, that you're invested in it and that you're going to do it. With that being said, it's going to feel different than a more expensive guitar. So you may be discouraged a little bit. And if it means you putting the guitar down and you were supposed to be the next Hendrix, 
then I would suggest getting a better guitar because it may be the one thing that's that's holding you back. With also with that being said, uh, if you're the next Hendrix, there's probably nothing that's going to stop you. So a crappy guitar isn't going to stop you. So even if it is a crappy guitar, you're good. You should be good. Um, it's, it really comes down to practice and being dedicated, you know, being passionate about what you're doing. That's going to get you there, you know. Does the B7 make a, a, a chord bluesy, whether major or minor? The B7 is a, is a major chord. Oh, the flat 7. Sorry. Uh, does a flat 7 make a chord bluesy, whether major or minor? Eh, kind of. No, it's more like um, it does it, it. It makes it sound jazzy if it's minor, in my opinion. It makes it sound bluesy if it's major. But even then, it depends on the context. So that's kind of like that's kind of like saying is red an offensive color? Well, red it might be an offensive color if you have a red shirt and say like brown pants. Like usually red and blue would go together or red and white or something like that, but usually not red and brown. Okay. Um, just making sure I'm not wearing red and brown. <laughs> no, but but seriously, a uh, flat seven, it depends. Uh, so, for instance, um, here is here's a here's a flat seven chord, um, the first chord. Let's see. Uh, now, let's see. Here it is in a blues setting. Here's a flat seven chord. Um, that sounds terrible. What am I doing here? Hold on. Let me get a different tone going here. Here we go. Those are all seventh chords. So those are all seventh chords, and that sounds very bluesy, right? But I could also do something like... Um, Let's see. Now I'm in the same. I'm going to change keys just because. But if I did something like. Um, and actually, that, that's not going to work because that's a. It needs to be a major. So let's see. Like. Um, so if I did like a. This, that's a seventh, that has a flat seven in it. This has a flat seven in it. It's a minor chord, but that sounds jazzy to me, you know? So it depends on the context, like how you're playing that. Okay, great, great, great questions. And we got one more minute. I'm gonna answer one more, okay? Um, play Creep by Radiohead. Um, you know? I forgot. I, I honestly, but the top of my the top of my head, my brain is so fried right now, Jeff. But I could tell you something here, really quickly. If you go onto YouTube or Spotify and type in Kirby K E R B Y, do this right now because you're going to hear me and my wife, my beautiful, beautiful, loving wife. Uh, you'll even see how beautiful she is. Um, type in K E R B Y and creep c-r-e-a-p because we did we've got a little project that we call kirby and the roaches whole long story i won't even go into the name um i won't even go into the name but nonetheless the band's called kirby and the roaches it's just me and her and we've got a few songs that are on youtube and then we have them they're on spotify too it's just a project that we did we have no intentions on doing anything with it other than just being artsy and making beautiful music and we've got maybe three or four songs out there but one of them is creep by radiohead and we and i listened to that one jeff because i did some really cool guitar bits and pieces in there okay all right my friends we're at the the, the 2 p.m mark and i am hungry very very hungry Thank you so much for everybody who played out today. There's over 200 people just in the chat room alone. So I know there's other people still watching on YouTube and what have you um, that are just not in the chat room. And so you guys rock. Thank you so much. I love doing these. You know I do. Uh, please let me know how I can help. Take advantage of the course today. 100 bucks off, buck 32 a lesson. 
um, or visit me in Nashville. We'll do it 100 bucks an hour, and uh, or I should say, a buck 32 an hour with the course. Or visit me in Nashville, and we'll do that. Um, there's a link on the screen, yourguitarstage.com/slash May 100. And um, yeah, there you go. Thank you so much for everything. Love you guys. Great questions today. Thank you for playing out and uh, and great and on all. Uh, Chris, thank you so much. Jason, thank you so much. And I am out of here, my friends.